What's up, buds? Welcome to We D and D. Oops, all Bams edition. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I already messed up. Like right out the gate, I had uh, I was muted, so you didn't get to hear. I'm gonna give you the AMS ASMR stuff. There we go. Got to do it right. Welcome in, buds. Uh, just chat, hopping into chat here. Grim, thank you so much for the sub, bud. Always appreciate you. Um, I did get your message just before stream, and I'll be getting back to you shortly. Um, I see Drew in the house. I see Jake in the house. We've got uh, some of the lovely faces of Weed D&D here. Of course, the lovely uh, Stephanie as well. Um, Arge, baby, good to see you, man. Um, this is a, uh, just so you kind of know what you're in for tonight. Uh, this is something that I have talked about doing for a long time. Um, you're up there. I gotta stop looking there. You're up there. Uh, it is a solo stream. Um, it is uh, something I'm trying to do to start kind of broadening out uh, the what we're doing here in the studio. And uh, so I kind of turned the cameras around, and we've got. Wait, don't forget. Oh, let me do this. There's some. I'm learning. I'm learning. This is all a. Pro it's not a thing until it's a thing. So I can't make it better until it's a thing. So now it's a thing. Um, but also other cam. All right, we're back over here now, guys. Um, so, so yeah, so bam, bam behind the scenes. How did I not see that? Like, uh, word puns are kind of like my whole thing, bro. Um, thank you so much, guys, uh, for being here. Again, this is, uh, I'll be kind of slapping it together as we go. Um, but one thing that has been coming up with the show, obviously, we're getting ready for uh, season three here in studio. Uh, big, awesome news. Abby Dandy's going to be rejoining the, uh, the live cast for that. Um, and we uh, built some of the characters. If you haven't checked out our YouTube, hop on over to YouTube uh, backslash Art Hard Studios. Um, and we made up the characters. Uh, I've got them pulled up over here. We might look at them a little later. So um, mostly, this is kind of a test of concept for a solo stream. I do have a few different creative projects that I'm going to be trying to utilize the space a little more robustly for. Um, some of them we D&D related, some of them not. Um, I also have just like a couple other creative projects that I need to build. I've got my niece and nephew, who I believe are nine now, uh, coming in for Thanksgiving, and uh, I want to run a one-shot for them. My, uh, my brother has reached out to me about like, hey, make like a fun game for the kids. Um, so I've got that as something uh, that maybe we can address uh, as we go tonight. Um, I've also got two new stream concepts that uh, have been building up. And uh, no, there's, there's another. Um, and so this is kind of like a, a bam behind the scenes. Thank you, Arj. I'll never forget you. Um, where I'm just going to kind of throw some stuff out to you guys and see what you think. Um, I've got a couple different creative projects here. Maybe I'll uh, highlight and outline as, uh, as we go along. Um, and then also, like more so than ever, I'm like right here with you guys. I see shadows in the house. Welcome in, bud. Always good to see you. Um, all, all the old buds, man. You guys have been with us for so long now. It's just such a treat. Um, and so that's kind of where this came from. I, uh, full admittance, um, I don't usually get nerves or nervous. Uh, I am a professional entertainer. Um, and so there is, you know, a certain degree of a lot of that stuff just kind of gets in the way. Um, I do feel like today this, this kind of a thing, this solo cammy, you guys talking about all of this stuff kind of thing is something that I, maybe I've been a little afraid to just jump in and do. Um, and worry about failing and stuff. But like, that's an important message for me in the studio is like failure. I think we have this horrible connotation with the word and it's actually like, that's the only way you get to anything. So after this is done, after I've talked with you guys and hung out and we've worked on these things together, I can look back at it and then I'll know what it needs. Um, so thank you guys for kind of being a part of this experiment with me. Um, thanks for as just for supporting the show. And also, hey, this is kind of like what it looks like on the other side of the room. Um, this is our big soundboard. Uh, those are our mic receivers. Uh, some lovely art from uh, local artists. Uh, the, the pointing is weird. That's going to take me a sec. Um, Bex Nichols uh, did this piece back here. I commissioned it from her uh, during COVID. Uh, we've got a little bender. We've got one of our weed hats. Never forget the mimic, this incredible mimic. One of our uh, weed D&D mugs. That's right. You you can also get your own weed D&D mug. Uh, if, you head on, if, you t if you're with us on Twitch, just type exclamation point merch in the chat and it'll, it'll take you over to our square store. Um, sorry, the, the big bosses uh, told me to make sure that I advertise. Um, that's a lie, it's me. Uh, so, uh, it's so good to see everybody. Uh, obviously I saw uh, uh, Munch slide in as well. Welcome in, man. Um, so this is the thing, Munch has heard me ranting about this all week. So uh, this is it in action. I see a smile as he's in chat. Bam can baby, we are behind the bam. So I do have uh, a couple things. First off, I want to check in with you guys. How are you doing? How is your world? 
how are the buds? Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for exploring this space with me. Um, but you know, how, 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 how is your world? Uh, are you guys creating anything you're excited about? Um, or if not, let's, let's think about some fun things that we could make, you know? So, um, good to see you guys. Coffee, I see you, baby. Thank you for being here. Shameless self-promotion. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, for just $5.99, you can get your own BAM personalized advertisements with the qu such quality as, hi, I'm BAM, the Hard Heart Studios. You might know me as the dungeon master of Wii D&D. Speaking of Wii D&D, look at this guy. Just look at it. Original artwork. Beautiful. You could put your coffee in it. You could put your grinder in it if there wasn't markers in it. For just for just five ninety nine, everybody. Right here. It, email me. I don't know what that was, guys. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna find out together. <laughs> um, so yes, we uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff in the works. Um, I, I'm gonna start uh, kind of with paper towels. Get a good grade on your fr on your test. Um, I just wanted to start off with kind of what's going on here. Um, obviously, we've been down from the main campaign for a little while. Um, a lot of that uh, is on my end of things. Uh, currently getting the schedules and everything all in place for the, the setup of the new se uh, season, as well as some upgrades that I would like to do in the space. Uh, we've talked about changing our camera positioning around a little bit and trying to utilize the space even better to help tell the stories that we're telling. Um, obviously, all that comes in line with everything else we're doing. Uh, it was a particularly busy couple of months there. I was doing some Shakespeare and uh, working with some really great people, working on a video game um, with a, another incredible studio here in town. Um, but all that aside, it's just to say that, that I, I feel like there is some things we've learned uh, from the process up to this point. And so now it's like, look, I'm a theater guy. So it's like, when I started all this, I had no idea what I was doing. And then we started, and then COVID happened. And so we immediately, right before launch, had a shift to digital where I know even less of what I'm doing. And then for two years, trained in those fires. And now we've gone live in a studio. And guess what? I'm, I'm still learning what I'm doing here. So uh, I'm not about to, what? We got raids coming. Careful, cantrip is coming in, guys. I didn't think of anything fun. Wait, I have a lightsaber. I'm just, wait, wait for the, wait, got, wait, wait, dang it. How do I, stop, stop, you know, that's the thing with lightsabers. You, you never, you can, I'd be dead if this was a Sith fight. I even know how this turns on. Can't get it. Giving up. Coming back in the raid helmet. That's the thing. We found a thing, guys. Uh, thanks. Oh my gosh, this is so uncomfortable. Careful cantrip. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, I absolutely love Careful Cantrip. They are some of my favorite human beings in the world. B-Town, I see you, baby. I see you. Got the raid helmet on just for you guys. Um, honestly, DM Dave and those guys are incredible. Obviously, if you're here, chances are you've already heard me shout at the top of my lungs about them many times. Um, so from Bam in the Raid Helmet to my friends at Careful Cantrip, thank you so much for bringing your party our way. We are, uh, boom. We are, I don't know where to put this. That's, didn't consider where to put it. Uh... We're doing a, a, a little uh, bond, a little bam solo stream here tonight, guys. So uh, thanks for bringing your people here. Conjon, thank you. I love the helmet too. 69 viewers. Nice. You know what? That deserves a lighter up, my friends. Um, you know what? I'm going to run it now because we've got it. We do have a little uh, ritual we like to do around here, even when it's just me. I do this by myself in this room every day. Uh, take, take a look around. Make sure you're not going to light any of your bams, household bams, or bams on fire and go. Lighter's up. Mm. Wow. Mm. Let's hit that intro. <laughs> I was late hitting the button. I heard a bong hit there. I forgot to do the ooh. All right, hold, I'm not gonna go back, but hold on. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I have, uh, it's, it, I'm nothing if not a man of ritual. Um, thank you guys so much. Honestly, careful see, always good to see you guys. I, uh, I hop on with uh, Cantrip every time before we stream. It is honestly like, to get hyped. I love all the human beings over there. They're wonderful people. If you know 
how close we are with like black water. It is, it is the same thing. They're just kindred spirits and wonderful people. And I love you and much love to you as well. Um, I also sent him a, uh, a love video for his birthday. I'm not drinking on screen. There's water in that. Um, but thank you guys so much. Shadows, look at that, bro. Look at that, 36 months. 36 months. That's right, everybody. If Evolving Shadows and I had conceived a child, that child would be three years old by this point. And you know what? I love you, man. I'm getting better at putting my, pushing the buttons and, uh, and running this thing. Guys, you watch, you, you watch it for three to five minutes every night. Hey, yo, I know what that means. I know what that means. Uh, <laughs> guys, I see some other lovelies coming in. Uh, my, oh, look at that. Look at that. We've got uh, Get the Lettuce. Coming in, good to see you, bud. Um, killer, killer, killer. Uh, dang it, I forgot the game that you play all the time, but you're very good at it. Uh, it's the Rocket League, that's the one. We've done it. Uh, good thing that uh, smoking weed is such a huge part of this process, because I have that to blame for forgetting Rocket League. All right, guys, how's everybody doing? Careful, just, it's so good to see you. Guys, seriously, I know I just said it, but I'm saying it again. DM Dave is a treasure. And if you're, you're, if you're not including his face in your life, you're missing out. Um, so guys, thanks so much again for being here. I, I'm gonna keep repeating that sentence over and over because I forgot to reset my transition and I was worried about it. Um, <laughs> so what we've got tonight, guys, uh, I have a slew of creative projects um, that uh, I need to work on. Uh, some of them related to the show, some of them related to the world of the show. Mwah, good to see you, baby. Thanks for being here. Um, but, uh, and then I've got these res of Von Quill talking about handsome. What's up? You guys, res is flirting with me midstream right now. What's up? Oh, wait, hold on. Hey. How you doing? Seriously, guys, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that, I don't know how that keeps happening. Um, but it does, and I'm here. Uh, good to see you guys. We're going to be chatting soon, careful. We're going to be chatting. We're chatting. We always chat. You guys don't even want to know about the stuff we talk about. Um, yeah, so here we are. I, uh, this is the point where I actually have to <laughs> continue from the intro. Uh, I did want to shout out real quick, a uh, personal shout out to all of the patrons of the show. I don't have my name list up. You know what? I bet I could do that right now. Watch me do it. Hold up. Patron, this is the song that I sing. I actually typed the word patron instead of Patreon, which is the thing. Uh, Patreon is the best way to support the show. Uh, if you want to help us build this thing bigger and better and keep pounding out this incredibly high quality solo stream, Blackwater d and is here. Dean Dave and Blackwater d and were like this close. And if you had both spoke at the same time, my heart would have exploded because I love you guys that much. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for being here, Blackwater. Always a pleasure. We were, me and Steph were just talking about how much we love and miss you guys. So we hope everything's well uh, over in Canada. Um, stay on target, stay on target, I'm doing it. Uh, so, do, 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 look at this, look at this, I'm doing it, right here. You guys are seeing this in real, hold on. For just $5.99, you can get wildly ranting web content such as what you've just experienced. That's 5.999 million. It's a weird way to say that. <laughs> wow. Seriously, I don't know what, how that keeps happening. Uh, yeah, okay, Blackwater. We were just like, what if we just showed up in Canada and we're like, let us sleep on your couch. Can we play D&D? What if we tried that? Like, now I've said it. Now I've said it and it's a thing in real life. You might be asking, Brandon, why are you sitting so far off center of the camera? Why didn't you? And it's because I've got stuff. Like, we're going to pop up a browser window and, like, go over some things together. And I've already thought of that. But it even was starting to get weird to me. It's like Brandon, like, scoot over. Um, shout out to, we have our Mimic box. Our beautiful mimic made by incredible art artist Richard Colston. Um, he made this out of clay over a stash box. And uh, we shared a little unboxing video on here one time uh, that I made. And then I don't think I ever actually released it. And, uh, and then, yeah, our Wee Deity hat. This is courtesy of Gus Langley. Mm, mad love to the Gus bus. Um, obviously, that's Bender from Futurama. That's not related to the show. I just like, I just like Bender. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, We've got ourselves a nice little Wee d, d coffee cup. <sighs> Wee d, d Is that weed in your coffee? Maybe. Maybe it is. 
all right. It just it keeps happening. I hope you guys are seeing something during those flashes in my in my perception. <laughs> okay, this is weird. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is so I've seen a lot of people stream solo, and one of the things I'm always asking myself is like, who are you? Who are you talking to? <laughs> um, and so yeah, again, I keep I've got to remember like, look at you guys. You're the ones that are out there, and then I have to read, and then I have to look. Is that weed in your coffee, or are you just? <laughs> Man, this cop is super chill. Um, all right. So that's what I was doing. I was shouting out my patrons. And I'm doing great. Like personally, like I was, uh, I was worried, but I think so far I'm having a great time. Um, I'm just gonna hit the list. Oh wait, no, because this is their real names. Okay, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to give uh, give out all their real names. Um, I do have a list, but it is not accessible at this moment. Uh, thank you guys. Anyway, if you want to be a patron and get your name forgotten to be shouted out. Such treatment as, um, thank you, head on over to patreon.com and, uh, you know, so help, help us, <laughs> help, help, help me get other people in this room so that you don't just have to watch my insane rantings. Um, but honestly, Tim's here too? Oh goodness. Okay. So I have a few man crushes across the old internet here. Okay. Uh, DM Dave is one of them and DM Tim is another one. And I don't know how to put together that both of them have been around in the chat uh, at the same time. You might notice if I start sweating, um, maybe my hands will shake a little bit. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get, maybe I'll get a little coy. Oh, oh, hey, I didn't. Ooh. <laughs> this is, this is actually a lot of fun. So I don't want to dissuade anybody. Uh, this is a blast. <laughs> I never want to not do this again. Double negatives. Um, I'm just, I'm actually going to read through chat because I was like, we'll do the bong water when? Okay, black water. Let's do it. Let's like legitimately figure it out. So bong water is a fusion of the worlds of black water D&D and obviously weed D&D. Um, I had the distinct pleasure of playing Shren Old Buck, uh, the old Koja from uh, our prologue in a campaign of theirs. So our, our characters have been intermingled. Like we're just, we're touching fingertips. Um, but we want to do a, a combination. So we need to come to Canada and we can do it at the edge season. They're trying to edge me right now. I'm seeing it right here. Precarious, 29 months. Oh, so much support and love. Thank you so much. Precarious has been a huge uh, supporter of the show for a long time. Arge, a lot of you guys have. I'm, I'm like shouting to the choir right now. Um, but yes, and you're talking here in studio. The you, You'll have to smuggle me in. I think there might be, uh, uh, I might be on some lists in Canada. I'm just kidding. I just performed up in Edmonton not too long ago and Canada is cool. Um, so what's good, Bam? What's good with you, Precarious? I, I honestly, things are great. Um, Munge wants to see me riff on some session prep. That's definitely some, uh, some stuff I've got pulled up here. Um, I'll just, you know what, here's what I'm going to throw up. I'm just going to show you guys what I have considered maybe, uh, getting into a little bit here. Um, boop. So I don't know if you guys can see that too good. I did try to zoom in for you. So there, as any person who's trying to continually push on the, the creative wheels as they go. You get a lot of projects kind of stacking up wow. and it's like, some, you gotta make some progress on some of them. It's not an, an all in or all nothing game. Um, and that's a little bit of kind of a very important part of what I'm trying to do with the studio here. Wow. I think a lot of people, I think we've romanticized um, what the process of being an artist is. And I think that's beautiful. Obviously it's a romantic notion to follow these passions and tell stories and do all this stuff. I do think uh, that I, and I don't want to say we, because it's, it's, this is a personally a me thing. I think I've done a disservice in not uh, painting the full picture of some of the, I, I like to think of it as a fire, like a fire casts beautiful light, but also there's some shadows that are created. And so I think a more truthful approach to what a life of creation is like will stop people from feeling dissuaded when they start their own creative journey and it's not all sunshine and buttercups. And then it's, they face a failure or something that doesn't go the way they want one time. And then they go, well, it seemed like it came so much easier to those other people. I must not be an artist. I want to eliminate that. I honestly, I think all of us are artists. I think the, the, that's, it is as beautiful and powerful a term as it is, but I think we all are that. And I think there's this creative flame that kind of burns. And that is something I'm trying to do with some of the stories I'm telling as well as some of these new projects. Um, and so uh, this kind of thing where it's like, hey, this it's like, look at how many things there are and maybe it, it, I might be better suited to treat one at a time. This is the only way that's ever worked for me. It's uh, 
you, if, if it's all on the ball, on one ball, I would say we D&D when I first launched was that way. Um, it was kind of my whole life. And it was like, I didn't know how to do anything. So I was doing a lot of things the wrong way. Um, and that took extra time. And so it's like, I realized that once I had a few things where I could set the poker down and work and grab another one out of the fire and, and, you know, get my progress in some parts of projects, that progress is as little as name a thing finally, or as big as set up this, uh, this massive sprawling season campaign stuff, you know? And so I, that's a, um, some advice that I'm trying to give to creatives, um, to people to find their spark, to chase that thing that makes you happy. Um, and get yourself into that. Bujum, uh, good to see you. Quits life, always a pleasure. It's just like, I, it's so e it, there's so much reasons to be overwhelmed or put off or afraid or uh, tired or, you know, like life is hard. That I want, I, I, I have found I am the happiest I've ever been in my life now that I, I'm stemming that creative instinct more. And it's like, I also want people to realize like failure is not the opposite of success. It is the steps by which you get there. Like, so this stream is an example of that. Like I was, I think, afraid of putting out something that didn't have a production value uh, that I, for like some weird metric I put on the level of what I want the production to look like. Um, and the reality is until I do it, until like right here, until I'm talking with you and we're here right now, it's just an idea and ideas are perfect. They are infallible. They are bulletproof. And it's not until something is real that you can start the refining process, the draft number two, the, you know, getting at what you want that thing to be. So that's, you're seeing it in real time right here. This is, this is a, a step in that process. I'll watch this. I'll go, ah, that was wrong. That was right. I'll probably buy one of these lovely weed D&D coffee cups. Oh my goodness. Just, I put it in my hand. I want to hold it with two hands and smile and every sip go, and there's markers in it. <sighs> we D&D. <laughs> Sorry, I felt like I was ranting, so I had to, I had to break that up with a little jokey joke. Um, but no, I, it's, let's get into this, this, uh, this, this creative space. Let's celebrate the, the, the beautiful, glorious breaking of yourself upon the rocks to find what's beautiful in there and uh, and then finding a way to share those rocks with the world. So that's that's kind of what I'm going with. Uh, I'm going to check in here with chat. This is this was always something when I would watch other people do. I'd be like, how do they know when to check in with chat? I, I feel like I've, uh, I was talking a lot and not looking at chat. That's how you know. That's when you know. Um, so we hit that. Okay, boom. This is resonating. I'm glad it's resonating. Uh, Blackwater, you are some of the people I speak of in this context. It's there. It's like there are people that anybody doing anything is doing amazing. And I just want to say that. Like it's like doing something is hard and it's a lot of work and just doing fucking anything. Um, but to not just do but excel and celebrate and share that. Like the, I honestly feel like I know you guys as human beings and we've never been in the same room together. Like it's, but I know by virtue of the way you create and the passion with which you bring to storytelling that there's that thing and it worked on me. And it's like, there's, if any time my fire started to dwindle a little, I would look at yours and get a little extra boost. Um, so I'm glad this is resonating. This is kind of, these are the conversations I want to be having. These are the, these are the things that I think uh, are important. And that's why you build a studio and start a channel and, you know, start telling stories and stuff. So um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm stoked that you guys are here for this part because I'm specifically speaking to wonderful people like you. Um, I'm glad we could inspire you as well. Like, take your, take your compliments also, people. It's, I spent so much time arguing with nice things people said that it was like, when are you ever going to be happy? So... Um, thank you. I honestly, uh, I, I really uh, appreciate it. And yeah, your guys' world building streams are dope. Um, and so, yeah, I just didn't, I mean, that's the thing. I honestly, I just never wanted to like come in and do something that is not worth watching. I think there is like a crutch and like, well, I can. Uh, so I, w but it's like, I, I think like anything else, it needs to be worth your time and, uh, just freaking seeing you guys here and having these kind of talks and stuff. Um, shout out as well to Matthew Colville, who was like a massive inspiration to me and does a lot of these style streams where it's just him and a camera, um, and I watch them for hours. So, uh, again, shout out to a lot of the amazing creators in, this, in the creative D&D space. Um, we've got uh, solo stream notes. Check in with chat. Okay. Check in with chat. 
Boom. Boom. <laughs> Look at this. It's going into real time. Uh, yeah, because now I see it's like there's a certain amount of chat that now it's like by the time I get, I say, okay, we're learning here, guys. We're doing it. Uh, goes both ways. Beautiful. Started season to your campaign. Bracarius, I love, uh, I, I have hopped in on, on several of your games. Um, and I just, the, uh, the level of storytelling in them is fantastic. So uh, congrats. I'm about to start season two. Starting the season is always the hardest. Um, getting, the, getting that first step, that is another one of the shows, the stream concepts I'm talking about is about exactly that. Um, uh, Super Chat's on. We should try that shit right now. Um, I'm afraid of doing that. I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I am, uh, I, I, my lack of technical prowess. This is the face that I make when I'm doing something that I don't know how to do. And so I don't know how long you want to see that face, um, but an important message as well, which is part of what we're harping on. I'm no longer allowing myself to say I cannot do things. Um, if anything, and this kind of ties into uh, Cardman's great question. Welcome in. Thanks for being here. What inspirations have I encountered over the stream's history? Uh, great question. Um, and one of those I could probably talk for six hours on. But it is, this does tie into that, is uh, there, there's an instinct, and I think a lot of, uh, of people may give into that instinct a little too hard to find things that you do not know how to do, be dissuaded by the difficulty of them, and then you tell yourself, I'll never be able to do that. Um, my personal one of those is playing guitar uh, about 10 years ago now. Uh, I was sitting on my couch. Anytime I was presented with playing guitar, I would always tell people, I can never do it. I can, I'm super impressed by the skill set, but I'll never do that. And I can't, I just, my fingers are stupid. I'm dumb. Um, and then one day I was sitting on the couch smoking, smoking a joint. So I think it's only fitting that I should light this right now. And I had a couple hundred bucks in my pocket. And I said, uh, you know, you said you would never say you couldn't do anything. Like it's, it was like, I felt like I, an actual, like, Hey, I'm, I'm like battling with my own, like my own bullshit. Like I believe in this. It's my, it's, that's what I want the world to be like. It's my inspiration. But in practice, I'm just belittling myself and saying, I can't do a thing. And just like everything else, it's like learning. Is, is a huge part of that process. So this, all these things, that the inspiration I've learned from the, the story, um, from doing this for so long, is that it's like, it, uh, like you just, the things I can do now that I couldn't do three years ago blow even my own mind. Um, and so, and it's like at the time, I think I would have been served better being honest with myself about, it's not, no, you can't do this. It's, you just don't know how to do it yet. And there is a path by which to know how to do it and, you know, work toward it and don't, you know, belittle yourself for failure and don't pretend that you're not this amazing, powerful creature because you are. And so uh, that's, that's to tie into Cardman's question there. Um, some of the inspiration from the stream's history, um, as well as, you know, some of the stuff that uh, we've been doing, talking about the first step with Precarious. So that first step is always the hardest and then everything just kind of starts falling into place from there. Um, keep checking in with chat as my first solo stream note uh, that's now been set. Um, ooh, season three, yeah, season three is going to be dope. Uh, it's a very exciting. I think it's going to be a little different in tone than we've done. Um, we've, uh, in fact, coming right off Kush Kingdoms, which was like narrative almost as combat. Like the 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 skills challenges presented themselves through story rather than combat encounters. Indicus Empire is like the opposite of that. It's like monster hunters and big battles and uh, much more traditional D and D in the sense of how maybe we played when we were kids. Um, but lots of big monsters and scary deaths and gore, and, and, uh, and it, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, here's to season two. I'll, I'll smoke to that. Mm. Paid actor. I missed what that was in relation to. Um, do, 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 do. I'm not going to scroll. I can't scroll that far back. But uh, season three finale. Almost, almost there. Holy crap. You guys, everybody telling these, these stories in the space is incredible, and I love you all. Uh, Eberron is a killer setting. Uh, I love it. I have, it, it's so good that it's impossible for me to not just like rip them and put them into other settings. Like I'll just have Warforged in everything because they're, they're so fun. Um, uh, Waterdeep, uh, the game Waterdeep or the setting Waterdeep? Because Waterdeep, well, wait, wait, Waterdeep's in Eberron, isn't it? Anyway, probably a video. Uh, Dark Sun. Okay, Dark Sun was an awesome uh, old school D&D uh, &D game. Um, that was one of my favorites. Uh, at the time, I'm, I'm sure it, it's probably tough to, to go back to the, the, the technology is a little, uh, little old school now. It's like going back to play Baldur's Gate 1. Um, big battles, baby. Monster Hunter type game. Yeah. Um, and what's funny, there's a few of us here, Munch Party and uh, Drew, obviously, from the show. Uh, we played a lot of Monster Hunter World together. Uh, it was just one of those, like, we would get on and play for hours kind of thing. And there's something to that that I think could be captured 
uh, in D and D a little better. Perhaps some of the settings. Full admittance, like since we started the show, I haven't really been able to like read up on all the new settings um, as I'm building my own. But the uh, I do think there's like the what was it uh, Return to Evermore uh, that like that bartering trading parts for things like that system I think is great. Um, and I'll probably try to incorporate it in uh, in chapter three. Night's fuck down, baby. Night's fuck down. The Alien RPG miniseries. Ooh, I have not played the Alien one. Really, I haven't played a ton outside of D and D. I've done a little vampire, played a little werewolf. Um, I played some GURPS. Uh, I, I played Rifts back in the day. I couldn't not make the dude that had a lightsaber. I just couldn't. Like I was like, everybody else is doing tiny damage. This guy's mega damage, like a ship. So, um, but yeah, I haven't. Uh, in fact, yo. Anybody in chat here, throw in a couple, if you, if you do have gaming systems that you think I should check out, that's probably something I should do, broaden my, uh, my RPG uh, stuff. So if you guys, uh, yeah, if you guys have any, Waterdeep was a 2E campaign. The only Waterdeep I ran was the, I believe Dragon Heist is set in Waterdeep. Um, no, it's not. No, nope. maybe it is. Anyway, I'm probably wrong. Triangle Agency and God Killer. Uh, you might notice that I am uh, writing down with a pen as well as typing on the screen, but there's like some things that I have to physically write down or they just don't connect with me as well. So once I've written them uh, in my own handwriting, the, uh, oh, you need a little mood. Let me get you a little mood music. What am I doing? Well, let's go, uh, let's throw in, uh, da, 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 da. here we go. Uh, Blades in the Dark, Aegon, Blades in the Dark. Oh, look at that, it's the Great Tree. Music by Sandy Steiner. Ah, see, there you go. Okay, the Kickstarter book for 5e. It's already out. Okay, well, let me take a look at that. I'll probably steal it and do, <laughs> to turn it into weed puns. Just kidding. Ah, uh, Dragon Man. Boom. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i not one of those people that's like, I think Dungeons & Dragons is the greatest. It's just for me, it's like I, it's what I grew up playing. Um, I enjoy it the most. It's so adaptive that I've never really had a problem just putting the thing I want into it. But uh, playing new systems is always like a, a new a way to tell a story. So I, I think that would... Uh, Help me level up a little bit. Um, there you go. We'll move in the back. This is like a kind of a quiet song, though. Let's see. Oh, let's put on something kind of epic. This is actually one of my favorite songs. So Sandy made this one uh, for season one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kids on bikes is a cool system too. Oh, okay. All right. Kids on bikes. So, thank you guys so much for that. Um, I, Since it's written down with my own hand, I will actually look into these things. I hate it when I'm like, I'll put that on a list, and I type it on a note in my phone. I never remember to like go look at the notes on my phone. But once I've written it on paper, I remember. Paper, for those of you born before 2023, uh, we used to make from trees when we had them. Um, and then the robots took over. Um, and uh, I'm working for them. Uh, Remember, big robot says, serve us, you are fine. Little, little message from the robots there. Paper. We did it. <laughs> ah, shit. Almost stuck the landing. Um, but yes, kids on brooms, freely, series of moments. Boom, boom. This is my reading phase. This is the phase where Megan and I will be reading the chat to stay back from the phone. No, no. She'd empty her wallet to see the Weed DD cast play kids on bikes. Um, so now it gets an underline. And then I'm, I'm going to, I'm, and then I'll, you'll get a, a knock on your door and it'll be me. And I'll be like, give me your wallet. Give, give it. Give me, give me your wallet. Let me stay on your couch and play d d with you. It'll be just like that. Um, and there it is. And you throw it in. <laughs> so, okay. We have, uh, thank you guys for those, uh, those recommendations. Uh, there are so many. It, it's funny. It's, I don't even think I've heard of almost half of them. Um, that's how many there are in the space, uh, which is not, that's not me being like, there's too many. That's awesome. I just love that there's more cool shit. Ah, you gotta wet the old whistle. All right. Ladders up. We're not rolling dice, so there's no way I can get a crit hit here. I did bring the crit hit dice just, just in case. We need a, a D2 option answered. Ooh, something fun I found. This, this, hi, bam again. Um, you're looking great today. Has anybody told you that? How good you look? I'm just, whew, wow, good on you. Look, I just came over because uh, 
I found this super cool thing. It's, uh, it's called the smash dice. I broke it immediately. It's called the smash dice. You smash it and, when, and, it, and, it, I, and it jumps and then it rolls and you get results. And uh, so I'm, I'm probably gonna reach, I'm gonna change like what it says. I'll just tell you what some of them are. Yes, when pigs fly, meh, not looking good. You couldn't do that, you couldn't roll it. Cause you know what? You are looking good, you're looking good. So um, I wanna make uh, some of our own. Uh, I think this is a 12-sided dice. Yeah, that's 12-sided, little D12. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see if I can put it there. You smash it, and then it, and it hop, well, now it's not hopping right now. Hold on, maybe I'm, there you go. And it said, unlikely. <laughs> I don't like that kind of shade. That's why I'm changing them, I think. Like in a game, what is unlikely gonna, it's boring. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the smash dice. So we, let's see, let me check my notes. Updated them on the smash dice. That's in their message from the robots. We did that. Botch the Patreon list. Yeah, I did that. Definitely hit that one. Um, keep the browser tab up and then slide, slide behind it, slide. Oh, you guys won't even believe what's behind the browser screen. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. That was, that was, don't go back there. Don't go back there. Paper. Uh, YouTube. Yeah. Predator shit. You're right. That's, that's the perfect. Uh, there's no Rondon. Oh my gosh. Rondon Jaro. So good to see you. You're getting an oops all bams. Uh, Rondon, huge, like long time butt of the show. Good to see you, baby. Um, I am still learning the check-in with Chad again. That's the first, first, and you'll notice the first note for solo stream notes. Maybe I'll put a little timer and it'll flash in my face and I'll remember to look at chat uh, instead of missing things. Uh, spark them up. Hey, I'm loving all that. You know, they were all in for the sparking, the new Magic 8 Ball. Yeah, that's kind of the vibe of it. It's like, if you don't know, smash the damn. I like that you smash it. There's something tactile about that that I like. Um, okay, she's got to do 40,000 hours of podcast editing. Love you. You're amazing. Um, good luck with all the editing. That editing is one of those things where you're like, I gotta edit. And people are like, oh, cool. I'm sure that's fun. And you're like, <laughs> uh, one of the projects that I actually have here today is an editing project. Um, so I, uh, man, we got look, look at how it all ties together, guys. You see, that's a that's how you know that that this that you that you were supposed to that you were supposed to do the thing. Um, like a lot of laugh emojis. You guys are really, really digging the the content so far with the the, the rate of laugh emojis. I'm, I'm dying. Uh, Blackwater, ah, good to see you. Lovely, wonderful friends. Blackwater, I thought we've already shouted them out, but if you're not following them, you haven't listened to me already, and you're not going to now. Uh, but definitely do it. They're they're incredible humans. Um, okay, so. Here we are. Um, I've got, oh, I gotta change the song too. It's just been Lupin Ruby made and that's dope. We, I love you guys. I seriously do. Like it's this, uh, maybe, you know, here we are. Uh, one of the things about this project that, uh, when it first started, um, obviously it was COVID. Like it was like, it couldn't, like we built all of this stuff. We built this whole studio in seven days. Um, and a tremendous effort by many people. My father came and I mean, welded the grid in the roof and, um, my professor from college came and did all the framing for all the drywall. And we just, I mean, it's seven days. We busted our asses to get this thing done. And then it was like, I think that was like March 3rd or something. And it was like a week later, everything shut down. Um, and when I had written down on the whiteboard that's still here, uh, the goals for the project, and that was uh, one of the rewards that I don't think I anticipated as much as it really kind of became one of the driving forces was just like how great all the human beings that we've got to meet are. So what, it's worth it just for that, you know? So, uh, oh, here we go. What's going on there? It's doing a little, uh, oh, okay, I see what you guys are doing. Okay, and that's in the, okay, hold on here. Yeah, there we go. Let's get that, let's get that done. Oh, yeah. Wow. You're seeing it in real time, friends. There we go. I got one more here that I gotta, what is it? It's not that one. Sorry, guys, you're seeing this in real time. Uh, uh, eh, there we go. Sorry, I didn't realize all those little uh, things were showing. Maybe they weren't showing for you, and they were just showing for me. Um, but uh, they're all gone now. It's not going to bother me anymore. Uh, so we're doing it live! So here we are. Um, all right, dudes. Uh, so 
kind of uh, to full disclosure, here's we had talked about uh, kind of that there's a few things on the on the books here uh, to address. Check in with chat. I did it. I did it. I checked in. Are you proud of me? I'm proud of me. Uh, I've got some We Need Chapter 3 stuff uh, to work on. I am actually, I'm, I know it's like, you're going to do this. No, I'm cutting this one out. Um, I am going to do a Patreon access. It might even be like a free tier thing of spoiler content for the main campaign. Uh, I think it would be cool to create some level of dramatic irony where the audience is aware of things that the players don't know. Um, I try to utilize it in storytelling a lot, um, but even one step farther back. Um, oh, here we go. Lighters there. Lighters. Boom. Boom. I'm in. I'm in. Mm. Um... But yeah, so I, I, I do want to like, where there's the conceit, you know that you're going to, some things are going to be spoiled for the campaign. Um, and we can kind of start playing with that avenue. I know I have a lot of people have asked about my process uh, for putting together sessions. Um, I have a lot of really great resources that I have leaned on. Um, in fact, make that list. I'm going to make that list and share it. Um, just a couple off the top of my head, obviously, Matt Colville, uh, the Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master kind of revolutionized uh, the way that I see what prep should be. Um, and so, yes, we will do uh, some of the Chapter 3 stuff. Um, there are things in there that we could do that don't uh, uh, actually f steal from the, the knowledge of the show. The Spliff card game uh, is something where I've got, we have like over 100 pieces of art here from Vlad, and uh, we want to make like a 52-card deck uh, of playing cards that would suit for regular, you know, card game, uh, if you just want to play like War with your friends, as well as like on the back of the cards, um, and it may be really low tech. I don't know how, I mean, I'm not trying to become a card company. Um, on the back, a game, like a simple game system, um, where if you want like a, something a little more complex that has a little more play to it. Um, and then making that our game of Spliff that exists in the world of Ganjaria. Um, so that's, that's something that's fun, uh, that's art based. Um, but again, I'm gonna kind of skip past the chapter three stuff just for now. Um, if, if we come back and I feel like I just want to do it later, maybe I will. Um, but we've got the, so we D and D, uh, it's kind of a joke based on what people used to think the show was. They thought it was like little people playing D and D. Um, my, uh, my niece and nephew who are 10 years old, uh, or nine, nine years old. I think they're nine. They might be 10. I'm a bad uncle. Um, are coming into town for Thanksgiving. I think we're trying to play D and D with them tomorrow night. Um, so putting together like a little two hour one shot, uh, is something that, uh, that we could, we could actually start breaking out and doing right now. If that sounds fun. Um, the, uh, the inter the, the spark interview series, uh, is the, that's an interview series that I'm going to start doing, um, probably as YouTube content, um, somewhat based on the soft white underbelly interview series, uh, which is phenomenal on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, it's very personal focused interviews. Uh, he tends to do like with the fringes of society. So, uh, prostitutes or murderers or, uh, inbred families or, you know, the, the stories to tell of places that people don't always go looking for stories to tell. Um, and there was something about the approach to the interview that I really liked. And I came up with a concept um, about finding my, the first 10 of them will be 10 creators I've already reached out to. Um, and they all said yes, which was like a blessing in itself. Um, and I'm going to try to have these uh, deep delves into that spark I was talking about earlier, that thing within us that makes us want to create and, uh, you know, how that spark has been fostered the moments that it has dwindled the and really define a little bit more about the tangible thing that it is and and it comes from a thing where whenever my spark uh, uh starts to dwindle i find myself looking to creators and getting that inspiration just from whatever like it doesn't have to be related to the thing i do it's just like seeing people that are lit up that i like to think of it as glow when they glow from that thing that's very ad addictive it's you see somebody else do it you want it and I think it's one of the best things that you can do. So um, the Spark will be an inter interview series with uh, these uh, precarious. These first 10 um, are, yes, local uh, creators. Um, ideally, the project will not bear that same limitation moving forward. But in or this is a, a I, I haven't done a ton of interviews where I am not also like a character in the interview. Like you'll hear my voice from off camera rarely but it is very much about a very specific look at a person while they talk about the things uh, that they do. Uh, boom, Colony and Max say hello, and that's my niece and nephew, um, and they're the cutest little freaking kids, and I'm gonna squeeze them, oh, I'm gonna squeeze them. I am, if, if you are still watching, you are gonna get so squeezed. 
Um, and so, yeah, so uh, that's the, the, the wonderful uh, niece and nephew that I'll be running a game for tomorrow. Um, I think it's tomorrow. I don't know. It might be Thursday. We haven't said it. Um, but yeah, so here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. That's, I'm sorry, that's the Spark interview series. So uh, they are local artists. These are artists specifically that have been a relight for me. Um, and so that's why I chose the 10 that I did as I learned the process of what skills you need to utilize the best way to present these stories and interviews. I wanted to start with people that I have a little extra of a connection with off the gate. So I can kind of fill some of that vagueness with just the fact that these are some of my favorite human beings in the world. And I know specifically things that they've done that have inspired me and other people that I know. So it's, uh, it'll start from kind of a very focused, uh, approach to these 10 local artists who are doers. They are people that make things at a, at a consistent rate and at a high level, um, which is a quality I respect so much. Um, and so, yeah, it is, it is going to start as a light on uh, some of the creators in the local area, but will ideally as the project grows, if it is the thing that I'm seeing it is, um, I, I, I do anticipate it, you know, going to creators of all ilks and kinds. Um, so, but yeah, the first 10 as part of the series that I see in my head. Uh, is 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 going to be that way, so a little sip, a little crit sip, friend. All right, so um, yeah, that's the Spark interview series, um, as well. Oh, here, wait, check in with chat. We're doing it. So, see the first time chat, the the burger bald one jumping in. It has a little box around it. Of course, I look. Some chats. Okay, so Arj, idea. Bud's come up with a scenario that should happen in the campaign. Bam, Bam brings it out in a random moment. We all know it's going to happen, but only Bam knows when. I love that. I'm absolutely down. Um, what's fun is that, so with Brenna's character, this, this she's playing this plasmoid who's existed in the world of Gonjaria for since its inception or somewhere near it. Um, so she has like 500 years of history that we have tentatively agreed, like I'm okay with her just making stuff up and then me having to justify it within the lens of the game. So this is a muscle I'm already down and willing to work. So uh, I say, let's do that. Um, uh, Oh, Steph's out there winning duels, always. Um, and then, yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, this this uh, early on, Arj, uh, I wanted to build this place because cost is such a... Well, two reasons. One, when I was looking at doing my own show, uh, you can't smoke You can't smoke in, uh, in a lot of studios that you rent. And so it was like the idea of, yeah, you know, having access to a facility where we could do the thing we want to do our way, as well as like man, I have all these ideas. Everybody has a bunch of great ideas. Like, let's get a room that has some walls and some cameras and we can throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks, what doesn't. And like, so I wanted it to be more of a lightning rod for creators to feel like they could come play in this space and we could kind of explore that, that vision of it together. Um, and so that was like a huge part of what we were doing initially. And then like the digital shift, like COVID, literally like all I wanted to do was bring people in here and then all we couldn't do was have people together for, you know, a long time. Um, so that, I feel like it reaches back to the reason that I wanted to take this route, um, initially. Um, but you know what? And it flows again. See how it all comes together, guys. Um, the flow stream is the, is another, uh, stream that I'm, I'm very, I'm, this one is, it's, it's going to be a visualization of something that I think could exist in the streaming space. Um, and it's based on this exact idea. Like it's just the, uh, having a stream that is not necessarily production focused, but creation focused, um, where I invite all these incredible artists from around town to come and share a creative space where you can work on whatever thing you need to work on. And it, it's not necessarily like everybody that comes here has to be like on the stream or communicating, or you can literally sit in the corner and like work on your thing if you want. But as a creative, it's like, even if I'm just in the room with another creative person, uh, you know, it's called grounding, um, it, it's like, even if we're not working together, just that energy in the room, I start being able to grab from them and them from me without even really interacting. So I want to do that where it's like bring in creative storytellers, high, uh, Cuba, phenomenal writer. Um, also D and D content. Like, Cause I do believe like the art of D and D is a big part of the reason that I chose that vehicle for like our flagship production. Um, and so it's like the, the just creation, like a room by which the whole goal is to create things. And then it, it's called the flow. And so we would like to invite like the audience to come flow with us to stream. We'll probably have like a discord channel where if you have like works you want to share or get feedback on, uh, on stream, you can, or off stream, you know, we'll facilitate both. 
Um, and then it's like, honestly, like a lot of some of the best actors in town and some of the best writers and directors and singers and dancers and burlesque performers and writers. And, you know, it's like, the, it's just, we have a, such a robust group of them that having them all together in the space could lead to like, hey, could you have, you know, does one of these people want to read that? And then we have this kind of experience with the chat uh, as well as the art and the creative. Invite you to enter that flow state with us. Like, let us just be your ground. You know, if you just ping off of us and let's share that creative energy and get some things made. Um, Legend of Stacia, so good to see you, dear. We are uh, uh, one of the founding members of our sketch comedy show, Mother Fuppets, which will be making a triumphant return. That's right, guys. Mother Fuppets. If you ever wanted to combine like a, like a puppet show and an acid trip with a lot of just foul language, just like Bob used to yell at you in the backyard, then you're going to love Mother Fuppets. All right, uh, we are back. <laughs> Thank you so much for the bits, sweetheart. It is so good to see you. Um, but yeah, so the flow, that's another stream. It's just going to be like, we're going to have like kind of like some, a good vibe in here. Um, we have a couple visual artists that like live on property that might do some cool stuff in the room. Um, throw a little bit uh, of the, uh, of some like awesome music. Obviously like Sandy's out here. I'm still bumping Ruby Maiden. Sorry, I'll, I'll mix it up for you. Um, okay. So, uh, and just kind of try to facilitate a creative space, Get, getting from the step of an idea to a thing, which is what the stream tonight is all about. So uh, that's the flow stream. And then lastly, on my list of potential things to tackle, um, oh, I love you, um, is this clown Richard III. So uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, full disclosure. So I filmed a movie, a local director in town, phenomenal director, Brian Todd, um, reached out to me and wanted me to play this like psycho clown in a, in a film form. I talked a little bit about it on one of the streams, so I won't I'll tell long story short. Um, and so I played the psycho killer. I had the clown, the makeup, the whole everything we shot. We ended up having to shoot the whole thing in like one night. Uh, Cause one of the other actors had got cast on another project. And so we did this like overnight freaking gorilla, you know, jump in the car, driving around super quick uh, setups and shots. And uh, so it's, it's like four 30 in the morning. We finished all our footage and we had this cool room set that I was just standing there. I was about to take all my makeup off. I'm super tired. And I realized like I'm in this woman's leopard robe because I just did a bunch of blood stuff. So they just threw a robe on me. I had clown makeup. My hair's all a mess. And I was like, man, it'd be cool to do Richard III like this, like with this character. And so now it's the winner of a discontent is a speech that I have uh, pretty readily memorized. Um, and so, you know, a little blood stuff. And uh, so I, I was just, just like, ah, screw it. I went to these guys. I worked with an incredible crew on that. The whole team was amazingly inspirational. And I said, hey, guys, like, I know it's 4.30 in the morning. It, feel free, please, to tell me no. I don't. It's like, I know we're all tired. But would you mind, like, maybe just running the camera, just turning it on even? Like, you don't have to do stuff. Just turn it on and let me do this monologue. And they were in. Like, they were so stoked. And so I went in and I did one. And uh, I have both. And then after the first one, he was like, oh, dude, I love that. Let's, like, do some camera stuff with it. So... I have two versions of that. Um, they're, they're very short. I think the whole speech is maybe like 90 seconds or something. Um, but I have them as well uh, uh, that I could pull up. I'm, I'm, I am kind of looking for input as whether I should do them as one, like if one of them just is, is too much better than the other one and just do that one. Um, or like cut between them. Unfortunately, they're all the same angle. So there is like a rule of film where you don't, you know, you don't want to cut to the same angle and stuff. No, I think there's like some fun tricks that we could try. It's like, it's a crazy thing anyway. Why not be weird with the way we present it? Um, but yeah, so I've got those as well. Those are the, uh, the few that I've got uh, to work. Um, so I, I honestly arched through something out that was pretty gross. The idea of, uh, of you guys coming up with a, uh, something that occurs within the, the chapter three narrative that only you guys, only the oops, all bams audience uh, is aware of. That's a lot of fun to me. I'm glad that Munch is working on Ert, or Ert, Ert, Ert right now. I'm working on that Ert. Um, <laughs> the sidebar bams. Uh, yeah, that was one of those last. I was like, I smoked a little bit, and then I was like, you know, it's funny as if you have that other one that you can look at sometimes. So I'm glad. I'm glad that's a, one of the ones that actually worked. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna roll a joint also because I forgot to roll multiple of them. Herd Ert. Welcome to Herd Ert Productions. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, again, like this stream, as far as a test of uh, just concept, I, what's funny is here, I'll show you how, so I did, uh, there's like that thing streamers do. I'm hiding here, hold on. That's why I put the button there. There's this thing streamers do where they have like cool uh, multicolored lights 
And so I had like this, this roll of purple LEDs and I was trying to like put them around where it would look cool. Like I was doing, I was doing like a stream from the future, fu stream of the future, future stream. Um, and I just, I, that was one I pulled last minute. I was like, that, I, that's not the vibe yet. I don't have the lighting right in here for that. So I'm glad I did it. Looking at it now, this is far truer to the experience of what it's like to be in here. So um, that's definitely a skill you should share. Rolling a joint? Tom, is that what you're saying? What if I just waited for Tom? Uh, show us how to roll a proper one that doesn't look like how when I do it. Okay, <laughs> one, one hundred, hundred, a hundred, hundred streams. One hundred, we did, we did, one hundred, one hundred more. Uh, so, <laughs> how to roll a proper one that doesn't look like how when I do? Uh, so, I mean, this is a. I don't. Let's see. Can I get you here? Uh, there is a better way than the way that I am doing it right now, but just because it's like if you've never actually learned. So here's how I learned how to roll a J was from the uh, e Honda. Uh, the the way I've rolled joints, we did the math. I've rolled roughly twenty five thousand, which was uh, kind of blew my mind. Um, if you don't have a crutch, I think a crutch is, the, is a much better way to do it where you have a small piece of cardboard. Some uh, papers have them. But it's like a little piece that you put in. It helps make the uh, airflow through much better. They run less. They go out less. Um, but they'll still go out and run. But I, I was looking at a cigarette roller. I, I, had, uh, I was kind of like the people. I had like the weed department that everybody come, came and hang out at, uh, at, play music and like more video games, lots of Smash Brothers. Um, and then I was like, man, I, like, how do I not know how to roll a joint? Like, it's like that's like part of my, like, my apartment. And so I watched a cigarette roller, the little machines that they have. And just like what it was actually doing. And so I was like, oh, that's what it is. Like I, I was over complicating it. So uh, what I do is I, I create a little boat, um, like a little, just a little V with my own little dumb finger. Um, and then uh, amount is always personal preference. Um, I don't like to make them super huge for stream because they go out and run sometimes. So I'll put a, uh, a little, you see, just like a little, a little pile there. Um, I, I do like to then pat it down and just kind of make the shape of it with my finger inside the space. So here, actually, I think this game is probably better for that. So I just kind of even it out. Nothing crazy. Um, and then I cheat. I call this the cheat. Let me do it. I'll do it this way. Here we go. So I cheat when I do it. Uh, basically, what you want to do now is like pack this. So you take both sides. You like like rolling a receipt in your fingers. Just take both sides and push it up and down. You're going to see some fall out. That's fine. Like, don't worry about that. Um, and you're just going to kind of get it burr, 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 evenly pushed down and then slowly take the one in the back rup, and get it to where your paper line is at your weed line. And then this is where like dope dudes in San Francisco will do a thing that I can't do. I've tried to do it, but my, my, they just turn out worse. I cheat. I take my thumbs from there and then I just bring my fingers over like this, like I'm trying to pinch and roll it. And then I grab from the bottom and I start rolling it, and I just move my fingers as I go. It's not the cleanest way to do it. Get it up to the eye. A little bit of moisture. Flip it around, and then again, I cheat again. I don't finish the roll with my thumbs, and then, boom, it's just ready to go. Uh, so, the uh, that's it. You've got the, we'll get two good in there. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there you go. That was a good, good cut out there. So, that's... Again, I think putting a little crutch right there uh, helps a lot so that you don't, again, if your first ones you'll roll will be bad, just like be okay with that. Um, there it goes. Look, the thing works. Mm. As advertised. So, uh, yeah, we are, all right, here we go. <laughs> Welcome in. Yeah, perfect time to come in, right? Um, yeah, let's see. Suddenly it's like, stream ban for... <laughs> <coughs> I don't think I'm advocating anything. Obviously, like, consume legally. I am in a legal cannabis state. I think that's important, I guess. Um, we have recreational uh, marijuana law. So I am legally allowed. The, this is just a bunch of adults obeying the law uh, and playing D&D. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, I will, that's actually not a bad idea. Uh, maybe, like, making just a short video of, like, a cleaner version of that. Like, for five 99. That's right. Hi, guys. Bam. You might remember me from previous side conversations. For just 5 
That's 599 years of your life in eternal servitude to me as a demon lord. I'll teach you how to roll a joint. Come on. Hank, do it. Sign it. Sign the paper. Sign the document. And give me 599 years of your life. Give them to me. Give them to me. Sorry, guys. Again, wow. I, don't, I don't know why they keep happening like that. Um, side bamps the good twin. Yeah, little do you know, that's the guy you want to be hanging out with. Um, the two C, this two CD set of the greatest hits. That's right, friends. If you remember such NPCs as Shrino Buck, Glock, Boxel, and the rest, uh, just five ninety nine. That is five. 99s, no more, no less. For just five, for five payments of 9.9 .9 weed, you too, you, you too. You too. Uh, all the, uh, all the hits, they're all in there. Every one of them. If you're thinking, when you, when you think hits, they're on there. And they're already there. Uh, so, that's it. Yeah, this is how I sell. This is how I sell my, uh, this is how I shill myself. Um, okay, so here we are. And three, and three bad ones. Yeah, we even put a couple in there just to, just to juxtapose against, against the good stuff. So yeah, dudes, I am, we are at, let's see what, it's nine. Okay, it's been an hour. So I'm probably going to do a little intermish real quick. Uh, you're doing so great, Drew. Get out of here. Thank you so much. I wasn't sure how long this was going to go, but I, I honestly, like, I've dug this so far, and then I've, we still have stuff we can do. So um, I think the plan is hop to a little intermission. I even put the, the button on the stream deck. I did on that. Like, I mean, <laughs> not, not to say that I could definitely be Iron Man, given the opportunity. Um, little intermission. Uh, we'll come back, and let's uh, let's do a little creating. We'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll feel it out. We'll see how it feels. But... Uh, Shout out to all you beautiful people. Before I, before I jump away, I'm going to check in with chat, which is the first note that I am supposed to continue to remind myself to do. Um, one of us lies, the other only tells the best. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, guys, we are going to do us a, let's see, let me set the intermission to smoke. Hold up. I, I, I can do it. I can do it. I forgot that I had set the transition to smoke. And so when I did this cutaway, there was the smoke. That was my fault. I did that wrong. One more time with the smoke. All right, guys, we're going to jump to intermission. Uh, hang with us. We've got incredible art, incredible music uh, that has been supplied by the creative community all around this wonderful little piece of magic um, and all the music of the glorious Sandy Stein. Uh, so we've got a little 10 minute intermission and then we will be back and we'll do a little creating stuff. Um, holy crap, guys, we're doing it. Lighter, 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 lighter. We'll see you in, uh, in about 10 minutes. <laughs> I hit the, uh, I hit the intro button instead of uh, intermission. And so we're, we're, we're going, we're going to intermission.
I was muted the whole time. Woo, yeah, that was Fidget, see? Um, I had muted because he had gotten into the studio. I'm talking to the wrong camera. Anyway, sometimes your cat gets in the studio and you stay on mute on accident. Thanks for pointing that out, guys. I appreciate you. Going back. Ooh, we're back in single cam. Um, that is my adorable cat, Fidget. He is the best. Um, the problem is he only wants to stand on the things in here that ruin everything. He wants to go to like that one power cord you're not super conf confident with. Um, but uh, he does manage to find his way into the studio from time to time. Uh, and I would love to just have him in here, but unfortunately he is, the, he's, a little, he's a little rebel. I love him for it. Um, welcome back guys. Uh, officially, I was muted last time. What's up, Tyler? Uh, he lives right, well now it's weird. Like even though I'm pointing the right way, he knows actually, it's, he lives over there. Um, but, uh, thanks for being here, bud. Uh, we have had actually a pretty good time so far. If I do say so myself, which I did, and I'm gonna, um, we, uh, have gone over a little bit about what all of this has been for and about, I know to check in with chat more. Um, and that's, uh, that's part of our little lovely learning experience. Who won the, uh, the battle Royale? I got to shout him out here. Who got it? GF powers. Didn't even see you snuck in. Good to see you. Congratulations, uh, for mercilessly destroying your enemies. Um, so just coming live from right, right over, right over there, right over. See, it's cinema magic, friends. Even though he actually lives over near, it looks cooler if I'm like he's right, he's over there, he's that way. Um, but you know, art is art is pain. 
Um, we have let me rant a little bit. Uh, I have uh, been, this is like dope. So I'm gonna try to facilitate this. Probably not on like a Tuesday regularly thing. Obviously we'll keep that for specifically for the show. Um, but I think, I think more of this. Um, and I'm, I'm actually having a really good time. So if, if it's just that, then that's fun. Uh, there is a thing that happens at intermission um, for those of you who have followed the show. When you're doing a production or any type of even this, even when you're just like talking to a box in a room by yourself, um, you're, you're running on some adrenaline. And especially, as I admitted, this was something that I had a little nerves uh, doing. And so when intermission hits, you're like, oh my gosh, I have to pee. And then you go, oh my gosh, I'm super high. Like you forget how much weed you've smoked. Like, well, we've, we've killed like a joint and a half plus that one I just rolled is ready to go. Um, and it all just kind of hits you at once. So coming back in from intermission is always a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a wavy feeling. So uh, thanks, thanks for that. And if you like, I still have the wrong transition set. And if you like, I forget what the premise of the joke was now. Dang it, tech. This is why I have uh, geniuses like Stephanie and, uh, and Sean and Tom running the, uh, the stuff back here. Heckin, heckin, hi. So here we are, guys. Um, we have talked about quite a few things, and uh, there, I think we'll jump through many of these. The, the one shot's probably, that fits some of the needs of what uh, Munge mentioned that he'd like to see, kind of like a little bit of behind the scenes about building a, uh, ooh, Johnny can't rock, oops, all damn. That's right. Now that I have the transition set correctly, you might ask yourself, how could I be all bam? Well, I ask myself that all the time. And I, I, never, I never find the answer. Never, never find it. But yeah, and so uh, we've got some uh, fun, creative stuff a little bit outside the lens of D&D. &D. I am kind of like, I feel like maybe we'll do that first. I did set it up and it's like, I would set it up, so why not do it? Um, plus, this is a cool little aspect maybe you guys have not uh, gotten to encounter about uh, scene breakdown uh, behind the scenes. So, um, all the band, we're here. Here we are. But where? Where are we? We're in the Art Heart Studios. And uh, if you would like to utilize the Art Heart Studios to create just whatever crazy shit you think about in the middle of the night, you reach out to old Bam. You'll know him because he'll be holding a little coffee cup like this with two hands and taking sips of his markers. That's right, this uh, Wee Deity mug, I'm glad you asked. Uh, available at the Art Hard Square store. Exclamation point merch in chat or in the details if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, Wee Deity. So, <laughs> why is Bam? I think, I, I think that's asked a lot, like why is, why is Bam doing, why is he doing that thing again? Um, that's right. I, t I take a little bit of marker. Um, I'm not ashamed of it. It's just a part of who I am. I think it helps with the collaborative process. <laughs> Evil Bam, I'm back. I, that's unfortunately, Evil Bam got high and there's only so like meticulous or meticulous isn't the right word for that. I just, uh, macabre was, I think was what I was reaching. I just can't, I don't have it in me anymore. This is, you get on this cam, even he's like, what's up guys? This is you like my little... This little dragon guy here, made by the same niece and nephew at a Build-A-Bear that I'm gonna be building this one shot for, so it all ties together. Um, ask Brian the Dracodile. There's a new Brian, Brian. There'll be a new Brian in season three. I'm very excited for that. Uh, build a bam. Uh, you can, uh, for, although for $5.99, you can build your own bam. You just spend five, you give me $5, and for 99 cents, I build you a bam plus five dollars. Uh, so we're back, I'm high, I'm bam, I'm high. We've done all these. Uh, there's the, multiple transitions are killing you. There is but the two. But uh, sometimes I throw a little smoke into it and then I forget about it later. Um, you, you, you can watch on YouTube. Um, so, okay, we have a little one shot uh, that I think I'm, uh, we're gonna conceive how I go about building a quick one shot that is player focused. Um, and then, like I said, I kind of already threw these in. Um, so I say, let's do them. What the heck? Uh, I did that weird, uh, for those of you that missed, I'll do it super short. I filmed a film recently at the end of the night. I wanted to do a weird uh, Richard III monologue in a clown costume because I just it was one of those things where I was like, why not do it? I'm, we can do it. And so now it's a thing. 
Um, and so I'm going to uh, show you two versions of the same monologue. The first one, uh, nobody like they, they didn't even know what concept we were doing. Um, they just let me play in the space and turn some cool lights on in the one of the scenes that we were shooting. And then the second one uh, has some really great uh, camera work that uh, was done. And so I'm I'm at a lot. I'm, I'm still kind of going back and forth between the two of them. Um, and this is like maybe I take the best of both and mash them up and use some creative answers to how to cut between things that share the same angle. Uh, so it's not as jarring and clearly you're jumping back and forth between like a different viewing of the same look. Um, and there are like I could just put a giant clown on the screen for those moments uh, to transition. So it's like there, there's no you can always do anything, um, but you just wow. want to do the one that's cool. Um, ooh, dude, Ma, Ma, psh, man, she's got some good monologues cooked up. She's one of those characters that I like to spend a ton of time building early on. And then was like, wait, she's kind of like the end person. And so a lot of that work has just been sitting in the pot, sitting in the pan, uh, getting ready for a sweet map monologue. Um, so, all right, let's do this. We're going to do, uh, I think this should work. Um, thank you for the bits. I love you. Um, we're going to do these two. And then, you know what? I'm just going to ask what you guys think. And uh, if there's anything about one that jumped out to you over the other. Uh, and if you think maybe I would be better suited to mesh them together. I might do it either way. And maybe that's a cool stream idea, like the edit, how I edit. Um, I know Mav is banned backwards, and I'll tell you, that wasn't like, <laughs> there was like a point way too late in the process where I realized that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna do these real quick. Um, let me know if there's audio issues. I think I sorted all of this out, um, but we are, let's do it. Let's, uh, this is this is directed, uh, well, this was just something we shot. So there, it was a random pickup in the middle of the night, and I'm sharing it with you now. And I'm gonna mute, and then I'm gonna remember to unmute. Here we go. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York, and all the clouds that lowered on a house in the deep bosom of the ocean are buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung for monument. Grim-visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front at now. Instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, wow. he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasings of a lute. But I, it am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking lass. Wow. I that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated a feature by dissembling nature. Ah! And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair and well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, you see the end there. That's a little of the uh, the post cut footage that the just exclusive on. That's right for just five ninety nine, uh, which I just now realized is I think the actual cost of a Twitch subscription. So I could link it to that. You can get quality Richard the Third clown monologues like what you just experienced. And let's go back to Bam for more. All I could see was like muted, 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 muted. I turned. I wasn't muted. I, I remembered. Um, so that, uh, yes, that is the first cut. I want to jump to the second one while we're, we still have it kind of in mind. Um, but that's the first cut. That was before we kind of made some shifts and adjustments. Um, and here we go. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean are buried. 
And now our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung for monument. Grim visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasings of a lute. But I, that am not made for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking lass, I and am curtailed of this fair proportion cheated of feature by dissembling nature. And that's so lamely and unfashionable that dogs do bark at me when I walk by them. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair and well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. When you get a little bam leg there, that's right, friends, for $5.99, you can get a little of that quality bam leg, just like your mom used to tell you to stop looking at from the back of the car. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you guys uh, for that. Um, it's funny, when you're high, you just look at things so differently. Like, there's some very clear moments that stand out in both for me. Um, but just on uh, uh, the passing of those two things, um, the... Wow. Just looking at what chat's got to say. Vote number two. So, uh, and then cut them into one. Mash it. Sold. So, you know, uh, cut back and forth. But yeah, I, they're, because of the insane nature of the character, it's like, uh, I think movies like, uh, um, forgetting the name of them. Uh, uh, oh, my God, the meth movie. God damn it. Uh, Tyler, we were just talking about it. Um, but anyway. Films that use the the medium by which the story is being told to also like solve problems you may have when it's trying to tell a story. I think it's like the yeah the crazier it is like the more random it is. I, I had this in the movie. There's this chicken uh, that had the perfect face, and there's a scene where I'm uh, you know uh, honking my bobo so to speak, and uh, I made sure to like have it looking at me, and so I was like we'll smash cuts of that weird chicken face. And uh, uh, a, a nice nimble capering, as my uh, my, my boy Cube pointed out there. Um, Beth Bear. <laughs> Freaking uh, meth alligator. Gus Langley was in that. Um, so, yeah, and get into the close when he's a little crazier, when he's like a little more like trying to plot, cut away a little. Uh, that little dance that came on the capers nimbly, I would, I, I, it's like, I, I have a hard time looking at myself for long periods of time. That's one of those things I'm like, look at him go. Look at him get that little caper nimble. Um, so, okay, cool. I'm, uh, actually, it's great. Literally, all this feedback is fantastic. I, again, am writing it down on paper. I know that kind of defeats the point of the old browser window, but, uh, it just, it just helps me process better, I think. Um, put a little music on. Send the, send the, let's see here, what we got. All right, guys. Currently, you're looking at Brandon, looking at a list of music. Um, some from the Diesel Dynasty, some from the Fallen Kingdom of the Fell Sworn. Um, Big Boy Bryant, when he blew it. You know what, though? This song just takes me there. Just takes me there. All right. So, uh, yeah, a little, little nimber. Yeah, there is, like, a harshness now. Um, so Heath Ledger's performance was so good uh, as Joker that, like, any time you're playing kind of a psycho clown, you have to be like, don't just, don't. Just don't just be a bad Heath Ledger. <laughs> like, he did it better. Do your, find your own thing. Um, and so I, I feel like in the film, the, like what we have, the film, the movie we actually recorded, um, the film, uh, was a little, I, I think there was a little less, uh, just connect, just connections to Ledger's Joker. Um, I think because of the improv nature of doing it, I may have leaned on that a little heavier than I would. 
uh, under most circumstances, but it was, uh, it, there's a couple points where I'm like, all right, all right, yeah, Heath Ledger's Joker was dope. Stop, stop trying to do that thing. Um, yeah, matching the insanity of the character, the insanity of story to the insanity of the character. Because that's the thing, it's like, I like that that character tells you he's going to be a villain, and you go, oh, fuck. Like, it's like, it's, he hasn't been like, he was all the fucked up shit that I do. He's just like, the world has been mean to me, and I'm going to be mean back. And you're just like, ooh, okay, bro. All right. Um, phenomenal. Uh, uh, one, one of the better uh, histories of Shakespeare's insanity to story and character. Boom. Ah, that ancient wind's in the background. So, uh, sweet. Thank you guys uh, for indulging me. That That's one more check off the old creative list. Um, we have talked about these. There's not really much progress by which we could go about. Uh, and before I move on, we had discussed kind of the Spark uh, series uh, of artists, um, uh, the in, an interview series with uh, 10 of the creators in Las Vegas that have been personally inspired my journey um, that are creators and then make and make a lot of stuff and like really enhance the world by their presence. And so um, that series is going to be a little separate from kind of the to the camera kind of like fun vibe of the studio stuff here and um you know it's not going to be pretentious I, the whole goal is not to like take it too seriously but rather to get all of that stuff out of the way and explore this this glorious light that that burns within us um and so oh man johnny thank you I almost swooned freaking joaquin is just man he's just yeah yeah let's take those two and just like have uh, pop out a, a joker movie that would be weird because ledger is passed so but for 5.99 you can order up the corpse of maybe I, too dark maybe that was too dark i'm gonna i'm gonna back off that one i'm gonna back off we'll uh we'll hit that with a second edit um <laughs> we'll come back when that's refined and not so dangerous um it was it was gonna be somebody's fucking a dead body i'll give it away maybe we'll get to it later um i'm a bam fan. you're a bam fan I'm a, I'm a johnny fan you guys are all awesome uh, Johnny, you and I did a movie together once. I, rem I remember that. Um, that sure was fun. So uh, the Spark series is cool. The ground, the flow stream. So that's kind of one that I'm interested in uh, a little feedback from you guys. So, so as kind of conceptualized, the flow would be this room would be there would be multicam catching various areas, but it wouldn't be so far as a production based stream. Like the Literally, it's kind of a window into the creative side of things and encouraging you. And, you know, I would jump on and connect as, you know, it wouldn't just be a free free record thing. But uh, I would kind of be the conduit between that space and the the buds that are watching or coming along or joining the Discord uh, community as it goes on. Um, but that space would be kind of cultured with a little bit of creative lighting and just a little, maybe a little lo-fi music or whatever or musicians are here playing, you know, just kind of the life of the space in that time. Um, and then using it as a time to like collectively collaborate on creating. Like if you want to bounce ideas off of people, there are people that are there. If you want to just vibe with that energy and see what you get out of it, which is where I would often find myself in what I'm seeing is like just being around people making things helps me make things. And uh, my little spark, that thing we're talking about in the other series, like it, it gets, it just bolsters itself. It cuts through all the bullshit and ego and, and the negative self-talk, like there's no space. It's just like, you're just surged with creativity. And it's like, let's fucking fail. Like let's fail so many times and get to something that's a success. Like once you fail, you know what doesn't work. Uh, and so it's like, that's, that's more the vibe of that stream that I'm thinking about the flow stream. It would be off, it'd be an off day. Um, probably maybe bi-weekly or once a month kind of a thing. But um, how does that experience sound like I don't want, I also don't want it to be something that's not, uh, a communicative experience where it's like if that I don't want it to be like hey let me watch let me show you a camera feed of us doing this I want to integrate it more into the like what is cool about this type of like being able to talk to the people that are watching the thing you're making and and that like use this that's not a thing that I see done a lot um, through this platform and I think that could be something really good for everybody you know what i mean it's it's the like i i was talking with munch the other day i think the best version of myself shows up in this room like it's like when i'm in here i'm far more linked to the things that i want to do the, the, the things i want to actualize and so it's like I, i've seen it with other creators when they come into a space where they know they can kind of get away with anything and so that's it's like i just kind of want to open the doors up uh into that kind of creative space and uh 
you know, share it with, uh, with all you people and try to see if, the, if there is a way we can bridge that thing that happens when you're in the room to people watching and feeling like they're in the room with us and see if we can, you know, help share that glow through the, the fibers of the interwebs. Um, and so, you know, and again, maybe we do one and we're like, this isn't the right thing and we'll adjust. But uh, hopefully, the, as far as that goes, Grounding for Creative is a place to create, like I said, kind of the, the battlefield by which to take a thing from an idea and turn it into a thing. Um, inside the actor's interweb, yes. <laughs> Um, see artists do their thing and just explain their process. I don't care if they're experts so much as I like to share the processes, I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I care to like share the processes, I feel. Um, yeah, and it's, again, it's like until you've heard a thing and then you have a reaction to it, um, you don't know what, you know, it's like, it, I, I don't know if I don't like a thing until I see it done in a way I don't like, or I don't know that there's a way to tell a thing I'm trying to do until I see somebody do it in a better way. Like, Scott Pilgrim was like that for me. There was a lot of, like, video game imagery I wanted to put into my storytelling and then like Scott Pilgrim happened and I watched it in theaters and was like kind of beating myself up crying afterwards a little, a little bit like loved it so much but like was like oh somebody did the thing you want to do like so much better like the, the, where you were going to go wasn't even a great starting point and uh, I think to, when I think back on that today I laugh I'm like no dude, like that's that's the point like now there's cool other ways you can do stuff um I think that Wes Anderson movie uh the, the short that just dropped on uh Henry Sugar, something about Henry Sugar uh, that just dropped on Netflix is one of those. You see it and you're like, oh, there's like really vivid ways of portraying a story that aren't being explored as much now that there's kind of a formula to make like a movie that looks like a movie. Um, and so that's where, that's the stuff that excites me, I guess, is, is seeing if we can use these, these new cool things for weird applications. Uh, pirate software, I'm gonna write that down. I have not checked out pirate software. Um, but yeah, so that's the uh, that's our basic approach to the flow stream. A couple other new things that are coming from the uh, yeah the message is not, it's the the thing freaking ah. um so yeah let's do the th the other thing so we've uh, we've kind of gone over those are a couple of stream concepts that we've got coming out if you guys have any thoughts ideas or anything feel free I'm on the Discord um, I'm you know, most everybody knows how to get at me a little bit uh, I'm here every Tuesday as well um, and the but Discord's probably the best uh, way to get a hold of me. Um, we have said we're not going to dabble in the chapter three spoilery stuff yet, so I'm going to pull that off. But we do have this one shot uh, that we can address. So, um, honestly, let me. Uh, what's the best? One? All right, I'm just going to share paper and pad here. So, um, this is going to be. Let's see. What is it? 9:38. So, I think it's good to give yourself uh, the expectation of roughly 15 to 20 minutes for good prep of any game. Um, when you're establishing a whole world, sometimes that'll extend, like, for a set, uh, uh, like a, let me think, a chapter, a campaign. For a campaign, you're going to, there's going to be a little extra work. You want to know you have places to go and let them, you know, go about. Um, but I, uh, maybe this is a little bit more negative than I like, but it did strike a chord in me, so I like it. And that was a lot of the approach to campaign prep. It, it becomes masturbatory to a point where it's like, ooh, I've got a cool idea. Let's see how deep that idea goes. And you get what can happen. And I don't think that that's all the time. I know incredible DMs. I mean, honestly, Cuba here is like a phenomenally detailed uh, DM. And it does succeed because it is in service of the games his characters are playing. And so what can happen, though, is it's like so much work has been put into this thing that you think is really important that you kind of like want instinctively want to force them toward it so you can show off the cool thing. Um, rather than, you know, having a world full of cool things and letting them kind of explore it. Everybody is right in the way that they run their games. But for me, I, that was a pitfall that even I was falling into, where it's like, yeah, there's this like highly detailed amount of information for certain stuff, but it's like, is this stuff anybody's going to go looking for? And if not, am I then going to start leading them toward it because it's there? And uh, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master helped me a ton in the sense of like, make your prep, serve your, your players, and let them do like so strong opening this is i'm just going to do this boom strong opening um is kind of the like we're going from real world into the game i like to have a big thing happen i'm i'm kind of notorious for doing like the the whatever carriage you're in a wheel blows off or there's an attack or something but it's fun to just get right into the game um i'm building with the concept of a two hour one shot uh because the kids are a little younger and it's like i want there to be more time for reward in the process as well as kind of like give them some tools to let them experiment with their own creativity in a way that maybe they haven't been asked to by other ways that they encounter art. 
And so um, normally there's like such a strong thing. Um, this is almost the whole thing in a nutshell. It's like get to, before doing any prep in any game, specifically a one shot, if you know your characters, start with just kind of reminding yourself what's good about them. A lot of that will come from the player. Like the player will tell you like really detailed things about certain things and you know that's like a good way as a DM to know that's important. Like they they have thought about it a lot. It's, it's, it's something they want. And it's like in the storytelling experience, I can't necessarily provide, like just give it to them, but it is if the things play out, you know, one of the possibilities that could come out of it. So listen to what your players want. In our sense, we are building this game for kids that uh, have not played D&D before. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of barriers to entry in a game, um, especially for kids, uh, where like the nuance of what, why we love it as gamers might be one of the things that pushes them away as kids. But also like respect kids, like they're a lot smarter than you think. So I'm not tearing apart the rule sets, but I am gonna kind of like pre-build them characters based on the qualities uh, of them as individuals and let them kind of explore the taking, you know, some of their virtues and, and then let them tell me what their character is and that's what the character is. Um, but it'll be kind of like these twins uh, that are connected to some great legacy, you know, kind of deal with myth and morality. Um, but because I, they haven't told me much about their character yet, this will be being done while we're like getting them ready to play the game. Like they'll tell me and then I will do this work in real time because it has to be like supporting the things that seem exciting to them. Um, the other thing that happens in a game, this is another Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master trick, uh, the Secrets card. Um, Secrets card revolutionized how I run games and I don't mean that in any small fashion. Um, the notion of the secret card is you have 10, you just write 10. And every session you write 10 new ones. You can never have enough. Um, but you'll never really need more than, I've never run a game where I needed more than 10. Um, and even just the idea of having them there does awesome things. But you have a secrets card. These cards that bear information or things that are known in the world that could have consequences or gives you information or a rumor that's going around that's connected to your lore, which is like a cheat code for DMs to be like, how do I get players to invest in my lore beyond just their character? These, this is kind of that answer. Um, and perhaps that is like, answers to things around that they might be looking for. Uh, and then those 10 secrets are wherever they go looking for them. So it's a way to reward creative play. You know, I didn't have to say there was a treasure check behind the bookshelf, but if it's been a while since they had treasure and they go looking behind the bookshelf, rather than just make up something that might throw off the power dynamics of my game, I can introduce a secret. You know, they find a journal that has some information. They find a bag that has some gold and like a dagger stabbed into it. And there's some murderer's guilt, you know, whatever it is. That trick, like just that, it revolutionized the way that I looked at like prepping a game. You don't, you, you, you provide a space for them to explore narratively. And then you have these backups that can facilitate that space. So it's not, it's not being like lazy, which is the joke of the lazy dungeon master. It's being efficient. And so it's like, if they do a thing, if they're playing this really creative way and they're looking for something in a place you never even would have thought to put something, reward that. Like, that's what we want to be doing. We want to be immersed in this game. We want to be, you know, rewarded for cunning and, and really going in a, exactly breadcrumbs, not loaves, is a, is a great version of that. And uh, the plot and the story aren't the same. The plot is the prep, story is the player agency in action. Exactly, the story is what matters. Um, and by virtue of the way storytelling works, like that expression of the character showing you who they are, that's where you start determining what your story is. You know, like that, it's like there is a story that I, that I will have, an outline that will be like, I've got you covered. There's a thing that you're in, engaged with. Um, but behind that is a better story, maybe one that includes your observations in the world that I've built and your actions in that world and where they all come together. It's kind of better than any of our ideas. And so that's where I like this. And, and you'll, if you've noticed the big shift in the way that the games ran from like the first 50 weed DDs to the next 75 or whatever, like there was a point where it's like, Oh, I'm spending 10 hours a day trying to get ready for the next stream. And it's like on top of like a life where I'm auditioning and trying to have a life and play with my friends and have game nights and, still do this thing. It was, it was, a, it sometimes would be pushing me from doing the thing I love, you know? And so being able to have this kind of like structured, like, Hey, real quick bang out. That is not only like engaging and will reward the types of play you want to see. It will also like 
be quick and we'll lead them into the ways that, like those are the questions I want you asking. Who's this murderer's guild? Who's this, uh, this person is being replaced by a changeling? Like those bits of information are all like cool possible new story arcs that you're going to follow. So um, I, I love it. Again, I, and I don't take credit for that. That came from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. A lot of my structuring stuff comes from him because he has a very realistic approach to the time constraints. And like, what is the thing? Like, we want players to have fun. A lot of players need to be challenged in certain ways to have fun. But like, what is the best way for me to prep a game that's going to be fun? And then I have more fun. I literally feel like I play D&D when I DM from this side like this way, rather than the hyper-structured uh, tons of information, which is well thought out and thought through and, you know, what coin currencies work in certain cities and stuff. Those level of details are amazing. And if you do them, this is not me saying don't. But in the sense of like make, spending your time on what matters to make the thing that you want to happen happen, that's where I find that these tricks, it's like, oh, I've got 15 minutes. I can throw a quick just idea together. You know, that's that to me is like a very important thing. So... Um, that's where, again, none of this is, everybody has their own way of building. This is just kind of how I would set this out. Um, so characters, we do know we have like a little information between them. We're calling them the twin flames. Uh, it's just a, it's like they are actually twins. One is a boy, one is a girl. One is very, uh, 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 detail oriented and meticulous. One is very active. And, and so I think the balancing between the two of them is just fun narratively. I think it's also a fun way. I am their uncle. Like it's a fun way to see my niece and nephew, take themselves into a fantasy story and play out what they're what the what they think and that's like a fun thing for me to see so um the twin flames uh is just like a base character between them they will both be stronger together than separately they'll probably have some kind of team attack um dynamic put that there too um which we always do with our inspiration dice is these like epic opportunities um so the twin flames uh probably royal um it just oops sorry uh um, I'm really, I'm good at damn computers. Um, so, uh, a team, a team attack, they're both wealth. I'm going to say affluent, um, cause I don't know if they will be royalty or not yet with where we're at. Um, but enough that they have a thing that's extremely important to them that is taken by powerful forces. Important taken by powerful. And this also, um, is kind of a thing that while we get together and we, uh, start parsing out like what, what you want to be, how many, how your powers work. What's up, Vancouver? Welcome in, guys. Uh, definitely be sure to follow Vancouver by night. One of the creators, like I've been talking about all night, a uh, very inspirational human being. Um, so with them, it's like that, I can kind of be like, do you have a cool animal that you like? You know, like a Princess Jasmine and Raja, or, you know, like is it a dragon or a little tiny dragon? Or, you know, it's, to me, there's nothing I can't work around in, in, the, in the made up space. So having them have the most fun possible is important. So especially with being so young, like let's have it be fun. So that's something that I'm not going to necessarily define even right now either. This is just like, they have a thing that they really like. There will be powerful forces. Um, which kind of brings me to, boom, uh, the forces. So I like a dynamic of three forces. Um, it actually, I learned a new bit of information watching Adam Savage the other day. But uh, the, uh, the idea that like to make a smooth thing, you need three rocks. You need rock A to rub against B, B against C, and C against A. And uh, he was literally talking about making a smooth surface. But there was just something about it that like clicked with a lot of the messaging that I'm seeing in my life right now. And it was something that I noticed I do a lot, like even the Kush Kingdoms, these three opposing powers. Um, I do like the notion of, of three groups. It gives them a choice. Maybe they can like one, hate one, and think the other one's kind of their friend. Maybe they can hate all three, whatever. But it's like three is about right for them to make the choice rather than me being like, this one's kind of the better one. Um, so the, the three power forces that will be at play, um, which will come from setting. So uh, with setting, uh, there's a lot of like, obviously Gonjaria is a weed-based uh, world with, with weed magic. Um, and so uh, not suited necessarily for nine-year-old children, um, which means we're going back to Everendell. So uh, Everendell, for those unversed, was the world that was destroyed at the end of the prologue uh, to birth Gonjaria. Um, I have a little thing I like to do as a DM if you're running games and stuff like I link everything together So here's like a fun way to tell some story from the old world that might find its way through to my game um, So we're going back to Everendell before the uh, before the uh, The Feywild crashed into the Prime Material Plane um, 
So we know it's going to be Everendell. It's not going to be Gonjaria. Um, I do have a couple maps for Everendell, so it's like I have some source materials that I can lean on um, without having, again, to do a ton of work. Like, let's get this game made and something that we can run. Um, so the forces, there's going to be, we're just going to go military, um, aristocratic. <laughs> you guys might be like, hey, isn't this the Christina's? Uh, it is. Uh, and the... Uh, that's actually a good point. So we've got like the Oblivican, religion. Yeah, religion's always easy to do. Um, uh, religion. And then also these are like, I'm interested in what a nine-year-old's thoughts are on military and religion. And you know what I mean? Like it's, it's you know, just even though it'll be abstract, it's like there's something to gain from watching that relationship with these concepts. Um, maybe aristocratic, I don't like as much as military, religion. Uh, let's just do society. Like there's the 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 p oh, wow that's how I spell Sussuid uh says I right yeah there we go I can spell um, oh I'm not doing the psh, bro I didn't even have the browser up um, so we've got the twin flames concept is the characters um, I, they are very like quintessential kids in the sense she is kind of a little princess and he's like a little berserker um, so I see a fun play between like the the warrior champion and the the one of legacy or whatever, but I don't want to like also put that on them. I want to see what characters they want to make with you know whatever options they have at their disposal. That's a really fun thing about Tasha's is now it's like, yeah, make whatever you want. And then you get plus two to one stat, plus one to another. You know, it's like there's a really quick, easy framework for that. Um, and so that's the notion. Whatever those twin flames want to symbolize, if it's going to be magical and property, um, you know, combat oriented or just like their status or, you know, maybe just cool names that they have. Um, that's basically what their characters are. I don't know what's important to them yet because they haven't told me what's important to them yet. So that is a blank that will be answered in the like 10 minutes before we play. Um, they will have a sense of affluence uh, only because I find, especially with younger minds, it's like they think of castles and like high, it's, and I want to let them fill that in. Like it's like, oh, do you have a really pretty awesome thing? Like what does it look like? Do you have this awesome sword that was made by a great smith? What does it look like? Like I, I, I want to give them the Quick, easy, again, two hours to play. Quick, easy access to the to describe the the more fanciful thoughts of their imagination, where their Disney minds will go, and you know, and kind of see, let them paint with that brush a little bit. Um, the strong opening, to me, kind of it reveals itself in the sense of that that thing being taken. Um, now, obviously, that's like the MacGuffin uh, approach. <laughs> that thing I said, Mac I typed MacGuffin because I was saying it. Um, that thing being taken. Um, yeah, that, uh, Dirty Rollers, that's actually a great point. I feel like when I was a kid, like when we played from like nine to, you know, I, I started playing when I was seven. Um, we didn't, the rules weren't as important to us. Like we had like Final Fantasy rule sets that made no, like everything did nine, 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 nine damage and like it made no sense. But it was like, we did really follow the storyline almost to a T because it was like, we're not used to having that kind of sandbox freedom in a game. And so it's like, you don't really like, it's like, well, I kind of want to do what sounds like you are showing us is the thing to do, you know? So uh, Clifford McGuffin, BBEG. Um, so yes, that is like, a, that's a great point. I think adults do tend to like, they, they don't believe you. They don't, they don't think that this thing can go anywhere. And so sometimes you'll find those people that really want to like, okay, I open that door. I open that window. I open that door. I open that box. You know, it's like, they want to see what the limitations are. And that's where like, I think it's fun to have a more sandbox approach. Cause it's like, bro, you can't beat me. I got a thing in the box behind the door, behind the window. Like, let's go. I've got, I, I love this world. I've been living in it in my mind for years. So, um, I, I that is true. I think nine-year-olds might follow the story better, but maybe not as any DM will tell you, as soon as you think, you know what your players are going to do, you, you are wrong. <laughs> um, Professor Clifford McGuff. See, what's funny too is I'm not sure how familiar they would be with the term of MacGuffin. Um, so we are going to make Clifford Berg Mac Mac MacGuffin the bad guy. Uh, because I can do a fun voice that they will hate and is funny and they will laugh at it. And my name is Clifford MacGuffin. And so, yeah, it fits. Um, so I'm just going to throw that in here. We've already got it. Um, okay, bye, Clifford MacGuffin. Uh... And that's great. You get them real quick right in the way. Have them say some like really snotty, crappy thing that they're going to be like, oh, we hate this guy, but he has a silly voice. So we're having fun. Um, and then like may I give him like a really dark origin story. That's where playing with kids is fun. It's like they won't go digging for this, but it's in there. And it's, oh, oh, it's messed up. <laughs> it's, oh, it's really messed up. Um, like the gene. Like he's like, been, anyway. Um, so <laughs> religion is, is easy to do. Thanks, Johnny. 
Um, so yeah, Clifford McGuffin is going to be our, our big bad guy. Um, at this point, we have, you know, basically the concept of the characters. We have the, the, a little bit of the, the story behind where those characters will into the world, uh, give, granting them access to kind of whatever their imagination would desire. Again, I'm, that's more specifically because I'm really interested in seeing what my niece and nephew will do with that thought in their mind. Um, the secrets card uh, is something that we can, I'm just going to do, we'll do five for now. Uh, rather than 10, just because I think the other five will come by virtue of, like, uh, I don't know. Let's just do 10. Um, so we're in Everendell. Uh, if, ooh, if you'll give me a moment, I actually have a map of this. Um, and that's the stone that I make with my map with them. Look at the stone. Map. And then let's uh, let's fit that. In. I'm back here. I'm. So, oh, you guys don't even want to know what's behind this map right now. Um, boom. And then we're gonna bring him down. So I have Everendell. Um, sorry, I'm blocking chat a little bit, but we do have the uh, the map itself. Um, let me uh, revisit this as well. So uh, in the northeast, there's Candle Keep. Uh, obviously, if you're familiar with the, that's like a name I didn't make up. Um, and then the city of Redella. Dryad's Colt is cool because there was like some really high magical stuff happening around that area. Um, Nambul Deer was kind of the big town that got blown up at the end. Um, more, I think that was a little more in, in turmoil kind of all the time. Uh, Emerella is great where I think we're actually listening to the Emerella song right now. Um, no, that's an ancient one. But Emerella is a city we literally created from the show. So there's something fun in that for me. Um, it is the kind of quaint village by the water. Um, but their affluence, so that, that, that would speak to the size of the city. You know, it's like if they have enough money, obviously they're not living in a hut. Um, so Tilmore, Buraka was kind of the, the barbarian town where the rock came from. Obviously, Thoricus took it over. Um, and Cain Thalas, maybe Cain Thalas uh, is the way to go in the south here. Um, on the south edge of the map, uh, is it was kind of like in the world where we met it. It was the elven stronghold of the world. Um, but it's really easy to kind of reskin that as this kind of high fantasy city um, that has a little bit of everything. So we can have fun exploring, you know, different races and, you know, descriptions and asking them what a flaw they might have is and stuff. And like, let their little creative brain play in this space and see what's really cool about it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do, we'll say Cain Thalos. That's what we're going to go with. Um, so in Cain Thalos, uh, wait, we have a setting. Where'd it go? There we go. Uh, I can't remember how I spelled it at the time, but I know how I'll say it. Uh, so Cain Thalos, uh, it's going to be a very high-tech, maybe Eberron-esque. Um, this could be a little bit before the uh, the conditions of, of the Fae Fall, you know, back a couple hundred, yeah, maybe a hundred years. Um, and they will, it, it, lots of affluence. So there is, again, just to show, it's like you can link these and make them as big as you want, but when you just got to crank 10 out, just write 10, like whatever. Some of them will be good, you'll know. Some of them will be bad, you'll erase them. But like, so there is, uh, boom, is a, uh, a high-ranking military officer who has been replaced by a changeling. Again, a lot of this might feel a little Kush Kingdom Z. Maybe that's where my brain still sits. Um, the uh the there there's a fight club in the basement of the willows folk inn Ooh. and so you know what i mean like hey you find you're like you open you open some you know the dresser and there's this note that's like ah oh, you come to the fight club tonight and it's like maybe they engage with it maybe they don't if they do you can as a way to show you like how to link a little lore into it we'll say that the at the club is run by the Black Gauntlet. Uh, so there you go. You have an access to like the, the the shadow markets and assassins and you know what I mean? Like really easy. Again, we're using very like broad things because it's like we're not going to be playing in this world a lot. Maybe that's why I'll just do five secrets also. This isn't for going to be like a long session. But if they go looking for stuff around, there's fun things. Um, there's a... Here's a fun one. Uh, if you combine the the, the nine-year-old one shot's going to be i'm i'm aiming for two hours uh maybe 90 minutes to two hours um the as we kind of flesh this out you know it's 
Maybe even three sequences is probably fine for the purpose. What's up, Sparkles? Wait, oh, Raid Helmet. Raid Helmet. Raid Helmet. We got a Raid Helmet on because it's time for the Raid. And for just $5.99, you too can get your own Raid Helmet uh, from the from the Roman. I think it was the Romans that wore these. Anyway, Raid Helmet. Thanks for bringing them in, guys. Thanks for being here. I uh, hope you guys had a lot of fun tonight. We are uh, doing us a little something different on the channel from what you may be used to. And uh, we are, uh, we're doing a little uh, Oops All Bam stream. So uh, currently we're building out a uh, little one shot that I'm going to run for my wow. nine-year-old niece and nephew for Thanksgiving. Um, so welcome in all the new guys. Thanks for being here. I uh, hope you like what you see. Come check us out. We do a show called Weed D&D. It is a cannabis positive uh, actual play featuring performers from on and around the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, it is a uh, hoot and a half. We've been going for a few years now. So uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for bringing your vibe our way. We always raid out at the end as well, and we'll keep that love going. Mwah. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got, we're have got we writing a couple of secrets right now for the one shot. Uh, a reward for a thing wherever they go looking for them. If you combine the beer from the Willow Folk with a health potion, you will turn into... A clown. Okay, so like those ones, these little juicy, like here I, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I covered that with the map. Uh, boom. These are like little, these ones are fun for me because like you never know what kind of players you're gonna have. That thing could be like, <laughs> the, nobody, like it's, the, at the very least, it's funny to read that information. And it's like, what? But what I love about D&D is it will be like right before the last fight that they'll be like, Hey, maybe we should get some of that beer in one of those, one of those health potions. Like it's, I just love seeding some kind of weird creative uh, solution to an obscure problem that is yet, as yet undefined. Uh, so that's, uh, this is just an example of ways to very easily, very quickly add a robust, lore-linked uh, series of rewards for wherever your players go looking for them. So, and again, shout out to Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Um, that is where that concept comes from. So currently... This is kind of the outline that we've shot together and even explaining it in about 15 minutes. So they, these, these twins will symbolize the, uh, the twin flames. Uh, that could be if they want to be, and, you know, like I said, always talk with them about their players. Um, if, if it seems like they want to be like princesses and knights, cool. Now let's start kind of setting that. Uh, maybe that's the thing. They're like descended from a royal line and the two of them together at a certain time. And then I'll get to the time. Uh, at a certain time, we'll create this effect. And, you know, since they're nine-year-old kids, chances are it'll be something beautiful and awesome and hilarious. So definitely do. Uh, uh, the Sly Flourish's Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. His video series is incredible. The book is is uh, is inc insanely good. Um, and he's a phenomenal d, &D content creator. Um, so we know that, and, it's like, and then if not, maybe if they want to play that kind of like from popper to uh, hero, thing like the, the, you'll know like listen to your players talk about a little of like what they how they what story they think they want to play and they'll kind of tell you um so whatever that twin flame dynamic is it's very easy to think of the yin and the, the yin and the yang um so oh man yeah conjuring hardcover so bro we've got we have a hundred a hundred pieces of art of the, that's right for just for 5.99 you can see hundreds hundreds of pieces of art um for a, uh, a, that was actually the initial purpose uh uh we want we were, we really wanted to put out a ganjari hardcover book um i will say as the project continued to develop that became less important to me i do think we'll like have some version of that thing but uh when it, when it came to like which problems i should be solving it was like always show like though this thing that we're doing now is very exciting i feel like we're getting closer to like I'm not even closer, we're there. Like that thing, the reason that I wanted to do this project, there is a place that you get. Um, and again, I, I, I don't want to give away our human superpowers to other things, but like weed helps you immerse with the other players in a way where you just drop the outside world and are ready to play. Um, but there's a place we go when we're telling these stories um, where it's like the, you know, that, that it's the flow. It's that, it's that state where suddenly you're just kind of like doing instead of thinking about doing. And it's extremely rewarding, uh, as a storyteller. And I've done a lot of different disciplines. I've done film, I've done stage, uh, improv and the likes. And there, there's something about what this thing is, is the way these stories are developing that is exciting to me. That is like, I think an ill-defined new style of story expression, that like improvised narrative, 
with also the concept of of character driven there obviously i'm not saying we invented that by any means there is a million expressions of it on the internet right now but i think at its best you see it in in the best episodes or the best streams of a lot of those different places ah what's up bro so good to see you Adam Casa, welcome in ah, you didn't miss the uh, oops all bams but ju for, ju for just for just 5.99 you can get yourself. Actually, the cup, it costs more than five ninety nine. I'll change the script. We'll change. We're gonna go. We're gonna. All right, just for just five ninety nine, you could drink markers out of a cup with both hands and smile at the same time. We D and D cups available in the merch store. Uh, so yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for making it, bud. I really appreciate you. Another friend from the Blackwater uh, community. So uh, yeah, so we've got the. I'm sorry, I got a little thrown off. Uh, by just uh, Lucas being here, I'm just I don't know, dude, I love him. Great DM, killer DM. Listen to all his stuff. We uh, we had some fun like DM theory stuff when I got to be a player for him. I was like, I have these like sabotagey ideas, but I don't want them to kill the like be a mean thing. I'm not trying to like trick the players. I just want to make a deeper story. And so it was like we got to like play as DMs with each other. And be like uh, uh, none of this is answered. Obviously, like whatever happens happens. But like, ooh, ooh, can we try? And it was it was a lot of fun. I I really think that experience uh, helped push me a lot as a storyteller. So here they are. They have kind of the the means by which to describe a fantastic fantasy to my niece and nephew. Um, Clifford MacGuffin will show up and he'll take it from them and he'll he'll take it and he'll never give it back. Never. Um, and they'll hate him, and then they'll want to uh, go down and after him uh, to get their MacGuffin back. Uh, that thing, again, will be one of those defined things that's going to come from the context of the story it seems like they want to tell. They're like, what's exciting? When I start giving them information, I'll be like, ooh, they got excited by that or not by that. Um, I don't think we'll be spending a ton of time on the, like, heavy stat side of the game. Like, I'm just going to kind of have action points, and you can cast a spell for an action point. You can do you can whatever. Just streamline it so it's easy. You know, a little bit of math, because they're smart kids. They're smarter than I am. They speak more languages than I do. Um, but, uh, you know, a little bit of math, because that is, I think, why I got so good at quick math growing up, was like that in game. So, again, respect to your players, even when they're young. Um, but not so much that it's like, you know, a thousand rules that they have to consider and everything. I'm just going to try to kind of keep it fast. Um, so we have some secrets. We have our setting in Cain Thalos. Uh, we have the forces that will be at play, the three stones, you know, trying to smooth their story. Um, and then at that point, you have a couple questions you want to answer. What level is this going to be? Um, I always, because as you get higher level, you start to have um, the problem where you're learning to do so many things at once. There's too many options. I think three is always great. Um, three, you have enough hit points to survive a crit, but you also have a couple cool abilities linked to a story that you're telling. Um, that's probably where I'm going to put it. So we're going to go level three. Um, level three. Story. And so what that then gives us, uh, and make sure they don't lie about roles. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so like that's, thank you for bringing that up. I, I when I was like 12, we were playing on the phone. And I, I was one of those kids that like, I don't know, maybe picked the dice up before you check my role. It was really, it was sadly, I think a little bit, it was really important to me that like I needed a fantasy of success um, I, I, there, I had a lot of failure around that age and didn't have the same relationship to it that I do now. Um, and so it was like, I kind of needed the crit that I lied about. And so I understand within kids where there is like a, uh, a need sometimes for the, 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 di that dynamic to be at play. Um, but I also think one of the best gifts that I can give them is to show them that failure is not, uh, the opposite of success, that it's just another opportunity. And so in that sense of making like the, the missing scenarios and stuff, let them describe, give them the option. Like if, if some, if why did it not hit and then let their mind play, reinforce the, the kind of game you want to see. And that's the kind of game I want to see them play. Um, but also has all the touchstone things that made me love this game so much as a kid. And still to this very day that I'm talking to people about it at 10 o'clock at night. Um, Clifford McGuffin, we already have a bad guy. Um, there are a couple ways you can go about doing this from this point. So right here, boom, like I can run this game. This can be whatever. There was one thing that has been like the cornerstone to me figuring out how to do a one shot. And that is the time limit. Um, so Dungeons and Dragons, uh, is a great, uh, way to spend a bunch of time with your friends. Um, but it also is like by design meant to fill time. Like if there is like, that's part of it. Like you want to spend time with your friends. Let's play for six hours. 
Um, when you're thinking about running a shorter narrative, you just have these like execution points that need to happen. You know, you're trying to present them with a challenge, give them options to solve that challenge, and then resolve that challenge. Um, and so the time limit is kind of breaking one of the key conventions of the game. And that is, you know, in Dungeons and Dragons, a three hour journey takes 10 seconds of narration and a 10 second or a 10 minute battle takes four hours to play. You know, it's like there's this weird conceit between the way that the game, the time of the game and the time in real life. One way that I have found that works really well, I do play with a lot of new players, is like, let me handle the minutia of how the rules will make the thing you want to do work. I want to know what you first think. Like, I want your initial reaction to this stuff. So this notion that like, hey, we already have the twin flames. In two hours, there's going to be a, uh, a solar eclipse. And at that point, there will be some magical event. And if you can manage to get there with your thing or whatever, you know, with your MacGuffin, um, you can have your absolute success story. Whether or not they get there, that'll all depend on the story and the roles, but that's the goal. So a time limit, in a real life time limit, like you have two hours, um, will make it where I will only input the things that are really important because I want them to keep driving. And... I basically have to get this done in two hours. This won't be a part two. This, you know, it's, and that's the biggest thing with one shots. They always become two shots or three shots. So this is a way that I know 30 minutes left. This game is over in 30 minutes. I need to have the denouement. I need to have a, a, a resolution and then maybe a little time to live in that resolution. Like that's the best part. You save the world, but what world did you save? Give you a day or two in it and explore your success. You know what I mean? It just helps pace it as the DM. Like if this fight's taking too long, maybe you need to turn the knob up a little bit and like, Increase damage and lower hit points. You know what I mean? So um, that time limit, I think, is really important for a successful one shot that just ends after the one. Um, if you have a, people that don't mind continuing the story, that's fine. Then they just become campaigns, and I love that. Oop, hit the mic. Um, but realistically, like if, if your goal is just to have like a singular thing, this is a fun way where I can throw two hours at, at you know at kids that are probably not used to just sitting in one spot for two hours. They play a lot of games though, so it's like I play games with them regularly. Uh, and they're very intelligent. So I'm I'm this at this point, what is missing? Monsters, right? Or the thing by, that they are fighting. Um, there are a couple ways to approach this. You can, uh, I believe, if I I think I actually had this set up right. Um, I just want to go to tool. There, oh, there we go. So they have an encounter builder. Uh, on D&D Beyond that is pretty good um, as far as like, I don't know, I, as a DM, I think you find where your, uh, where your knobs are. Some people want a very meticulous, uh, you know, experience budget-based thing. I find in a two-hour story, if, if the fight isn't a, a one guard that gets taken out really quick, three guards that's kind of a hard scenario or, the, or like a boss leading to a fight, you know what I mean? Like you need kind of those deadly stakes in the main whatever encounter is. I like to just build kind of a flirting the line of a deadly encounter in here. Um, you can filter them by like all kinds of very useful, like, so monster type. I want uh, a, let's see, they're, they're kids. So um, Faye is always a really great, uh, uh, I don't want to say kids. They're, they're young developed beasts, <laughs> beasts. Um, but hags, you know, you, you get into the, the, the space of here. And now they're showing you all of these uh, challenge ratings. You can adjust like, hey, I don't want anything over a five. Um, I don't want anything uh, under a half. And then, boom, it starts punching them out. Then you start, you know, hey, that one looks cool. That one looks fun. I've done a ton of face stuff recently, so it's really easy for me to be like a couple boggles, a couple darklings. Um, I probably won't utilize this tool for running the game with them. If I was playing online, maybe I would. Um, but I also know that there are kind of templates by which a character at this at a third level should have an amount of damage that it should do. Uh, you know, roughly like a D8 uh, plus a stat mod. Um, if, if, they, if there's only two people playing, there's not as much ability to, to drain huge massive pools of hit points. So I'm gonna dial down. I'll still use the formula, like on here, like click a boggle. Um, it says 4d6 plus four. The reason that range exists is because from the weakest version of a boggle to the strongest version of a boggle, they're all represented on that spectrum. So if I wanted a really hard boggle, I would go 4d6, so I'd do that math, that's 24 plus four is 28. Boom, welcome in door tails, oh shoot. Here we go. Hold up. Raid helmet. We got the raid helmet coming in with the raid. Boom, boom, boom. Welcome in. Guys, oh my gosh. Follow Kelly. Follow Dorktails. Um, incredible DM, Kelly. I absolutely love you, bro. Um, they're pro they, everything they do over there is so high quality. Their costumes are some of the best online. 
If you're not watching them, you're doing yourself a disservice. Get over there, support those beautiful people. Um, thank you guys for bringing your party our way. This is the Rain Helmet. We're doing an Oops All Bams episode. Oops All Bams episode here uh, right now. Thanks for bringing your party our way. We will be moving them along to uh, another audience. I always remember to raid forward. So thank you guys so much. The best thing you can do is bring your people our way. Um, so yeah, we were talking about creating monsters for challenges. Um, there's a couple ways that you, there's a few different theories on this. The one I play, I could do 46. The, the strongest version of a boggle is going to have 28 hit points. But the weakest one, what if it rolled one on all of those D6s, is, is 10 hit points. So you know, like, the challenge represented on that spectrum. I think with two players, and again, they're going to be nine-year-olds, so not really uh, you know, strategic by the way, the minutia of the game at this point. Um, I'll probably be playing toward lower ends of, of things and having the narrative, the morals of it all kind of be a little bit more of the game than the raw stats. But you want challenge. You want death risk. You want you know consequences. Um, you want to support creative thinking, like maybe don't go run up and just fight that bug. Lure him somewhere. Set up a trap, you know. Um, that kind of gameplay is what I want to see, but I will typically turn up the knob on damage a little bit in that case. So if it's like a D6 minus one, now it's a D8 minus one. A little more risk of death, but easier to take out in the end. Um, so that's the the one structure. Another one is that, and, uh, and trust me, a lot of players hate this, but hate it all you want. It, it's very effective. Um, just have that as a rough variable. It can, it, it either, ha it, it's, it's Schrodinger's boggle. It always has 30 hit points or it always has 10. And like, whatever, look, whatever one you need to use, like whatever suits the game you're running in that time. If the fight's going great and it's a lot of fun and everybody's having a good time, 30 hit points every time. But if it's like, man, this has now become a slog and like we're getting away from the thing we want to be doing. Yeah, 10 the whole time. Um, you will find uh, uh, a great joy, I think, when you stop letting uh, specificity of some of this stuff cloud the, the experience. It is easier to do that when you've DM'd a lot. Um, I, I know that I trust myself to make that call in the end. I'm not gonna make it such a non-challenge and then reward you for the challenge that it wasn't. Like there is, I've, I, I love the, the game itself and have spent enough time in that space that I'm like, look, I'll, I'll challenge you and the, sometimes it's gonna be you know, there is a, uh, the rules that exist are there for a reason. There is a framework, and I think it's a really well-made framework by which to test these characters. Um, but let creativity, especially with kids, but honestly with adults too, let creativity be that variance. Let the, you know, if it's, if they are smart enough to push a whole carriage full of flaming barrels down the hill at a group of boggles, and the damage does 15, let them have 10 hit points because that's super cool. And that's actually a more exciting, let's keep following that path. Now there's a big explosion. Whatever sound was generated calls bigger things. You know, it's like there's a fun way to just keep pushing that while rewarding, you know, the flow of the game in the way you want. And with two hours, when all you have is two hours, you're just shooting toward that finish line. So I will have probably, uh, I'll, I'll just mop some template. I'll just go, I want a... Let's see, they're going to be third level. I want a challenge rating three. Uh, boom. And I want it to be uh, some, let's see, let's do let's do an ooze. They got anything for me? Yeah, here we go. Um, plasmoid warrior. See, okay, thank you, Brenna. Um, plasmoid warrior is a fantastic. So here we go. Now I have a stat block for challenge rating three things. This should take four level three characters uh, to beat at a, at a standard, and you know, it'd be like a normal uh, combat for them. I'm just going to add it and see what happens. Boom. I didn't set the level. So this is going to be deadly. Uh, it is twice as strong as the two of them would be at third level. Uh, that's where this 11d8 sinking down those hit points pretty much, uh, probably around 40 hit points. Um, pseudopod attacks, sticky buttons, like goos and slaps and front of the rear forces are all going to support the thing I'm trying to create in this game. And what I can literally do is just change Plasmoid Warrior to like Poop Demon or like whatever, feel the room. Um, I know that'll make my nephew laugh. Uh, but like, make it the thing you need it to be. Here's a rough sat block. If you want to give it a cool special power that's not in there, do it. It's more fun. Um, if you're, if it's just one monster, I like to give him a movement ability, like give him a teleport, give him a, a way to get away from just getting stunned and beaten down. Um, and this one has a gun, so that's hilarious to me, and I'm going to have it shoot boogers. Uh, Poop Demon, obviously CR12. Yeah, that's a future one shot. But, uh, but yes, so this, here's a great example. I need a roughly, this could be Clifford McGuffin. 
You know what I mean? Like he's, he's, he's like, oh, I'm this, I'm this Sarah, and I took him and I took your thing. But actually, he's this weird sticky monster man. Like, I know the game you're playing. I just want to make my beautiful niece and nephew laugh for two hours and love D&D. So, um, I, you know, that to me, I'm already, look at me. I'm already, look, this is, that's right. This is an authentic Bam smile. Because I'm thinking about them kids. Um, so I've got a monster. Boom, it's in. I can save it. We're going to call this uh, Clifford. MacGuffin, and I'm going to save that. Now it's in there. I can just reference it when I need to. Um, and the, the, that's it. Dudes, we've done it. So it's easy enough for me to give Clifford MacGuffin any number of guards. It's easy for me to follow, you know, if they're in the dark in the forest, some weird animal attacks them. That's roughly the stats of what I need. You know, it's, it is easier the more familiar you are with kind of the what those numbers should represent based on level. Um, but also it's, don't be afraid if you don't like, it's like, let the game be what you need your game to be. I like this mentality. Uh, I, I definitely, and trust me, I love the other way too. Like I love, I, dude, I was a 3.5 slob. I, I just love meticulous, you know, a rule for everything, but I, I do like the rulings, not rules concept of 5e. Let's figure out, I know the rules. You tell me what you want to do. I'll bounce off how the rules should work for that to work. If you can see that you trust me to do that, then we're in a good place. Um, and so that's, I mean, honestly, right here, guys, I'm, I, we have uh, knocked out some serious objectives. We, uh, <laughs> I was going to do the like children's show thing. We went over the clown video, um, and we, you have pushed me. I think we are going to do an edit and I think I'm going to do an old thing with that. That'll be fun. Uh, we will be setting up the, uh, the flow stream. Uh, I will build out kind of the discord side of that community as well as figure out what that time slate would look like. It would probably be a later stream. Uh, just because all performers are doing shows till 10 usually. Um, the Spark interview series uh, we touched on, that is going to be coming out. That will be a YouTube uh, thing. So if you're not following us at Hard Hard Studios over on YouTube, check that out. Um, and then we built our the, the one shot, two hours until, oops, sorry, until Eclipse. And the Twin Flames will have their MacGuffin stolen by Clifford MacGuffin. Um, if they start looking around or asking people for things or info, there's a couple secrets. There's a high-ranking military officer who's been replaced by a changeling. There's a fight club in the basement of the Willow Fork Inn, but it's run by the Black Gauntlet. If you combine the beer from Willow Fork with a health potion, you will turn into a clown. Um, so, uh, also, they're too young to buy beer, so that's like a fun scene also. Um, the only thing I would add to this, if I was going to run this for anybody other than my niece and nephew, you can do yourself a little favor by like doing like a scene... A, scene, B, where what the, var the variable is the character itself. Like, have a scene. Like, uh, so I'm just going to put Callie uh, is, uh, uh, realizes a new innate source of power. So she wakes up from a dream. She, something's floating around her or whatever. Um, and say in Max's case, uh, a great warrior seeks him as a tutor. So present him with another, you know, a great power source in the world. Um, and you don't even really need those. Like, I would just have done those if the call for them happened. But you can do yourself a favor if you're running games for more people uh, to definitely throw in those extra scenes. Uh, you probably won't use them. My, the whole thing on this is like, if you don't need it, don't do it. But if you need some of this, it's there. Um, Cain Thalos is the city that we've chosen, which is going to be like a kind of a high magic uh, place, kind of easy for me to put it as a plug-in diesel dynasty. Uh, and then maybe we see, maybe that's it. Maybe we get to, ooh, yeah, you just saw that happen in real time. So a long t diesel dynasties existed for a long time. Perhaps they're from the diesel dynasty. We get to see the story of what they were doing in Cain Thalos that led to them existing in Ganjaria. Um, boom, it's that easy, guys. Uh, we've got the, our map for Everendel, so I have like a cool thing. I might print it out and like give them a little map. That's fun. Uh, and then we've got some forces that are going to be working against them. It's that, I mean, like we spent a, an hour talking about it, but I think we really only spent about 15, 20 minutes doing it. So um, that's that's it, dudes. We did our we did some things. So um, like I said, the, creating the spliff game, doing some chapter three stuff, I think that might be a little more... Uh, opt in, you know, uh, you know, you're coming into some spoiler content. Uh, check in with chat more. Here I am. Call the shit poop. Miss 3.5. 3.5 is great. It really was. Um, and with the right people, if that's, you know, like if that's the kind of deal you're trying to play, it's such a great way to play that. Uh, I do. Fifth is my favorite. Uh, I, and I, I, I was a hard, hard on 3.5 for a while. And then I started realizing like, 
am I just doing that to do that, like to be like, hey, Star Wars is better than Star Trek, or which they're both amazing, and I love both of them. Um, so I love 3.5 and I love 5. But for streaming especially, for like telling a story in a compressed time format, 5 is incredible. So boom, 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 bam, boom. And for just $5.99, you can get all these oops, all bam streams, just like Mama used to make. We did. So we made on one we D and D we made a, a one shot for nine year olds. Uh, that's that's fun. Um, and uh, that we might record that. We've talked about it. We might have them in the studio and uh, and actually get some recordings on that. But we'll see what it is when it happens. I think that could be fun. Uh, also, we will be doing our uh, Patreon hang this Sunday. Uh, we'll be doing it at noon as usual. Uh, probably one o'clock as usual. I do have work uh, that night, so we'll probably cut it at about two hours. Um, we will be doing a one shot. Uh, for all of the buds for the missed or for the Patreon buds for that missed month, um, so I'm building that also. That's that should have been on my list as well, but I'm not showing you what I make because then you'll know, and you're not supposed to know. So thank you guys. Um, honestly, this was uh, one of those things where I was really. Uh, I'm just gonna be real. I was a little scared to try this concept, and I think it was a lot of fun, and uh, I will definitely be doing more of it. So. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for being the best buds in the entire fucking world. Let's turn that browser off. Let's do that. Let's, uh, thanks to everybody who brought their sweet raids. Those sweet, sweet raids. Um, and then, uh, hold up. Let's see. I don't know if this is possible. We're going to try it though. And then we do have us a little ritual we like to do around here. Maybe you heard about it. Maybe you haven't. We like to take a lighter like this. This, wait, nope. This is the lighter. Uh, this, it's a weed eating one that Jake had made for us. Hold on. Yep. And for, ju and for, and for just $5.99. I don't know actually how much it costs to make this, so uh, that is all I shall say. Uh, with this weed eating lot, make sure you're not going to bam your bams, but any of your bam bams on bam, and go, light as bam. Oh, oh it's going to be hard. Oh, oh, I got Ooh, thank you guys so much for uh, this, this thrilling, oops, all bam edition of, of weed D&D. Thanks to all my lovely friends who I see in chat. Thanks to all the buds who have made it and just make this thing worth doing. Thanks to all the incredible artists that do all the stuff that makes all the music you're listening to and all the art you see. Um, I love you guys and uh, love yourself. Make something. Don't don't fear failure. Let's let's fucking let's make some magic. We will see you next Tuesday, buds. Ow! All right, I'm gonna put the smoke transition on. I almost hit intro again. We almost did the intro again, guys. Night, Sams. We will see you next Tuesday, buds. We love you. Uh, uh. Smoke weed every day. So what? You can't touch me. Not from the internet.